treats. I had I had silkies and I had one um, white one snowball, but I had like thirty of them, and um, she literally followed me around the yard. I was doing yard work. Her and my chihuahua would sit next to each other watching me rake, and then I'd move to another part of the yard, and they'd follow me. That's my turkey. I got a 40 pound turkey that followed me around like a dog. It's <laughs> awesome. All right. Sorry. Uh, no, you're all right. That's a little after our regularly scheduled start time of 5 o'clock, um, but if we would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just so all the people who might be uh, watching this in TV land get up to date, uh, we just got back from a site walk out on Old Beaver Road uh, in consideration of the town possibly taking uh, that road over. And we're going to continue that meeting now. There's a uh, few of the residents here with us in the room, um, as well as our DPW director and our DPW director in training. <laughs> so um, with that, I guess, Dee, you had mentioned that you had some information for us. Yeah, I, um, I think that as at the, this, the discussion of Oakwood Common has been before a number of town boards and, and committees over the past 20 years. Um, one of the things that I find interesting is that we don't always go back and look at the previous work. So it's been literally, uh, next year will be 20 years since the first time the subdivision came before the ZBA. So there's been one session with the ZBA, at least two with the planning board, and there was mention of some meetings with the Conservation Commission. Um, so I think it, it might help the select board in its decision making if I do a brief synopsis of um, those meetings. So in April 2005, the ZBA granted a special exception and a variance application for wetland crossings and dimensional controls um, where the road was proposed to be within 50 feet of the wetland. So the proposal was eventually unanimously accepted by the ZBA, and it called for the wider part of the road where it meant Ashburnham Road to be 20 feet wide with four foot shoulders, with a narrower area of 20 feet with 18 foot of asphalt or pavement and two foot shoulders to minimize the impact on wetlands while also meeting the New Hampshire DOT minimum road standards. What it was seen was that it was seen as allowing housing and preserving wetland and rural village, village character consistent with the master plan, and that if the literal enforcement of the 50 feet setback had been um, required, then additional wetland crossings would have been put in. So that was some of the background behind how the road came to be the width that it was, was that it was actually a variance except, uh, granted by the ZBA. So one of the things that, that can be frustrating is that we keep saying the road isn't wide enough, but if we don't listen to our own ZBA kind of say, this is, this is a good thing and we're granting you that variance, then how can we ever kind of get past that, right? Mm -hmm. You're almost set up for failure from the get-go. So I, I, I think that as we go through this stuff, we haven't always um, known the history behind it. Then the subdivision went before the planning board and again, there was initially discussion about the width that wouldn't fall within the standards for no switch public roads, but then the ZBA decision uh, allowed consideration of the 18-foot paved with two-foot shoulders on the narrower part. The New Hampshire DO regul DOT regulations were presented for minimum residential road requirements for rural <coughs> subdivisions that allowed for 18-foot roads with two-foot shoulders but the speed would be limited to 20 miles an hour, which makes sense on that subdivision when you think about what is there. And it, that document, believe it or not, still exists on the state DOT website. Mm -hmm. I saw it today. Um, there was also concerns voiced by the planning board about cutting trees on the right-of-way. Even though there would be a 50-foot right-of-way, 25 feet from the center line on either side, um, because of the wetlands, there was concern <coughs> about too much cutting. So, you know, we've kind of grappled with how much cutting, not enough, too much, that type of thing. 
and, and certainly there needs to be some cutting that goes on. Um, the planning board indicated the road should be designated as private, although there was no guarantee of acceptance even if it was 20 foot wide. The minutes from that time period note that the road was designated as private to ensure there were no illusions the road would automatically become a private road, but there was nothing precluding the possibility. And that's almost verbatim from those minutes. Weren't you guys told when you bought, I thought John said the, last week that <clears throat> you guys were all told that it was definitely going to be accepted when he bought his house. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the builder just said, yeah, it's only a matter of time, we just yeah. got to finish the building, and then he went bankrupt. Right. So, yeah, that was part of our, I mean, sure. our frustration, but that's buyer beware, so. Yeah. What year was this? 2005. When yeah. the planning board reviewed it? Yeah. So that Initially. was shortly after the ZBA. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. you know what month that was? Uh, June. Okay. And one of the meetings was in June, and I don't know if it finished in June, exactly in July, okay. maybe they finished the three different, you know, how they meet over time. Is what, what you're reading, is that like something you created? Yeah. Can yeah. you, can I get a copy of yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. I'm not reading from it exactly, so I'll yeah. send it No, that's fine. Um, now, it, one of the things that I think, I, I often hear Jason say is, to think about the macro of what's going on during this whole time. And during this whole time, there was rapid growth, there was a fear that, that the roads would bankrupt the communities, and there was what new, what the, the state of New Hampshire calls the great road experiment, private road experiment, right? Everybody was going to do private roads. And what I'm going to talk about later on is now at 2020 to 2023, there are multiple bills bubbling up in the legislature that this experiment is not as positive as everybody hoped it would be back in at the turn of the, turn of the century. So. Um, the guidelines were the New Hampshire DOT minimum design standards for rural subdivision that allowed for low volume, low speed subdivision roads with 18 feet of minimum travel and two feet shoulders. These minimum design standards are still on the website. Mm -hmm. I saw that. The other thing is that there are what they call AASHTO standards that are mentioned in the subdivision regs that um, you handed out at the beginning yep. of our site walk. And it talks about low volume roads with lane widths of nine to 12, week, 12 feet. Even though 12 is preferred, a narrower paved surface width off, is often desirable to minimize the cost right of way and environmental impacts, which is kind of if you go back to the, to the origins of that. Now, 2014, that's when most of us came along and life got interesting. We moved in since <coughs> 2010. There was a, a, a second wave in around 2014. Um, the planning board still described Old Beaver Road as a private road and was very clear about that. But they were addressing a question about building permits. The original developer or builder had gone bankrupt and the town did not act on a security bond leaving the status of the completion in limbo. So there was, even though the builder went bankrupt, the town did not act on the bond and therefore it was lost. As homeowners, we chose not to act on that, but that's the reality of what happened. So then it went to the planning board. Um, the new owner wanted to obtain building permits without responsibility for completing the road. As part of the 2014 planning board review, Kent Brown noted limited pavement thickness of a quarter to a half an inch in, in a few places in the road instead of an inch and a half planned for the base road. The argument was made by the new builder and accepted by the planning board that while the top code had not been applied, the build was built to subgrade and paved in its entirety. It was safe and exceeded minimum standards for width and paving for development of its size and traffic. The planning board modified the conditions of the subdivision approval to include crack sealing and repairing the potholes, eliminating the requirement of a top coat. The planning board members noted that the road was private, but again, changes would not necessarily preclude acceptance of the road. Functionally, when the road agent inspected the work and the conditions were met, the infrastructure work on the subdivision was completed according to the amended subdivision <coughs> plan. Let's this work was completed before the end of October 2014. 2017, following the establishment of an HOA and banking some money, we were able to uh, have JDK come in and repair several sections of the road that when they inspected it, they felt needed uh, the work because it was not stable. So you saw the two areas that were up. And there's been additional crack sealing and potholes that we've been working on along the way. Um, and I mentioned that there was there's a, a, a bunch of things that relate to 
bills that are relating to private roads that are before the legislature <coughs> saying private roads should be accepted or private homeowners, private road homeowners should get a break on their taxes. So <coughs> just going forward, um, there's been, from a practical standpoint, there have been problems with the experiment of private roads, including the establishment and functional operation of HOAs, bankruptcies of builders, and use of securities over the past 20 years. Um, this town has definitely <coughs> seen a few subdivisions with bankruptcies where the lots were sold independently and people were left holding the bag and we are one of the first of those that came forward and has, has been around. Um, so you combine all of that with limited road histories, small town limited manpower, rapid growth over 20 to 25 years and turnover of volunteer leaders and it's easy to see why 20 years of history got lost on this road. Uh, the members of the Oakwood Common HOA really feel it's appropriate for the town to recognize the history in this case and, and work to accept the, the road as a class five town road. Uh, we know that it may not be without uh, proposed conditions such as as built and things like that, but when we look at Lower River Road of being uh, a one-way road at 16.5 feet and technically the um, allowance for a two-lane road with 18 feet that we have, I'm not even sure we should be saying it has to be a one-way road, but I think <coughs> the members of the HOA, again, with acceptance, wouldn't mind it becoming a one-way road if it had to be. But again, the conditions that the, the ZBA set were that it could sustain two-way traffic. And the town can't accept a one-way road. Uh, well, and yeah. again, I'm not sure it has yeah. to be one way, right? right. I think even, even, uh, even 2014, I didn't have all the history, so I would have thought, yeah, it would be a one-way road, and I right. advocated for that. But I didn't, again, I think this is where the history yeah. helps, of knowing yeah. that, you know, it's, it's not ideal, but are there times and places where it's appropriate? Yes. And it's not like we're asking for, you know, four miles of road to be, it's one right. small subdivision, which is, again, the conditions where it seems to be appropriate. Mm -hmm. In 2017, was there an official decision made by the planning board? I was writing notes on 2014 when you read off. So they they amended the subdivision plan, which means they changed the requirements for fulfillment of the plan. So we it it it, it is a completed subdivision plan, as though it was fully paved. It's just it means all the work is done. It has met the standards of the plan. That was 2014, all right. 20. I thought 2017, you said the HOA was formed and then the... Yeah, 2014. 2014. Yeah, okay. That was when all the big people of right. the, the lawsuits and everything. A part of that was that it would remain a private road and that it would, there was no guarantees it would become a public. Correct. So okay. people were very much, they said that, again, it would be a private road and then, but during the subdivision minutes, and this is, I tried to keep it fairly close to, to the language, it did not necessarily preclude acceptance of the road by the town. So they, they, they hedged very nicely to say, look, we're not going to tell you you can't ever be one, but we're going to tell you it's not, it's, it, we can't promise you that at all. Which, I mean, that's pretty much the case with any subdivision. You exactly. can never promise that exactly. it's going to be accepted. So it's just a, it's not the best, you know, ideally we would have followed a plan and, and the plan would have all gone well and the plan didn't go well. And there's only so many places we can influence that plan. I don't know if that adds any anything to the. I mean, there's a couple of things that just it's a, it's a set of, of of situations that one followed the other, and everybody just made the best decision they could at the time. But right. And like you said, changing boards, volunteer right. boards. Exactly. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. It is what we have to work with. And, and, I, and it's frustrating, but we chose to stay on the high road, too, where we could. So I, I would uh, have a question. Does the HOA have any funds to pitch in towards any possible? We do. I think we're uh, I'm going to let you speak to that. There's about, about $16,000. Debbie, can you get a, make copies of uh, mm -hmm. our, our Dee's notes yep. for us? Thank you. My, uh, can I say something? Yes, sir. Sure. Do we know what our tax base is out of those 16 <coughs> houses in that subdivision? Was How much money the town gets for taxes? Oh, it's calculable. 
I could, I could figure it out. I didn't just have to add up everybody's so tax bill. But. What I'm trying to say is, <clears throat> for us to have the road accepted, will be better someday when we go to sell our homes to say, look, we lived in a, a development, accepted road, so we get a return on our investment in the interim period, we're paying out for what we're receiving back, not too much. Well, part of the, is it okay? Okay. <laughs> um, part, part of your tax dollars goes for paving all the roads in I town. I understand that, yep. So, unless you're only going to drive around in circles on no, Old Beaver, we have you know all what I mean? Part, we have all no, I know. And we're generating I get you. Tax revenue. Yeah, no, I get you on that. But it's just, as far as like, Having a lower tax bill because your road isn't I'm maintained. Not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying. No, that. I know. I just it's kind of come up in conversation before, so it, it was. I just look at the dollars. Yeah. No, I agree. In my age, yeah. where I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it would add more value to your home. I think. Well, it depends. Unless people want to live on a private road. No, we're. No, um, it's not necessarily that. you guys. <laughs> I'm saying if you were gonna if you were gonna sell your house to someone, maybe someone because there are private roads in town that they don't ever want to be accepted. They want their private road and they want to keep it private. We're you know? not in that group. Oh. <laughs> no, I know. And oh, you guys was, are Was there something that, that um, was attractive about a private mm -hmm. road initially and then... Well, I was told the road was going to be taken. It was supposed to be paved and taken and then it's when I bought and then we lost the lawsuit the year after. So, and then so it was taken to court. Did you no. say? I, I, you well, know what? It's it's very convoluted. There's there's a lot of history there. I don't want to stay on the high road to say that um, that it was a decision that was not considered precedent setting. It was considered by the Supreme Court of the state, and there was a lot of timing issues and things like that. So I would just leave it to say that it 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 was it was deemed to be a private road, and that nobody. It was, a, it was a conundrum about who was actually responsible. To this day, <coughs> we, the planning board, haven't resolved the issue of what happens um, when a, a, a subdivision goes bankrupt. You know, does the, does the obligation follow the lot? Does the obligation go revert entirely to, hey, whoever's here at the time is the HOA, you get it? Um, right. We still haven't resolved that. We haven't had that discussion. It isn't that we ha we're fighting about it. We just haven't had that discussion. And the state hasn't said. The state, yeah. The, the state decided that it was ours um, and that the people who bought the whole rest of the subdivision were not, did not inherit the responsibility of the road. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I have to think about that one. So, so I would guess on the low end of your, to answer your general question, minimum of 105000 a year in tax revenue. Going 6500 <coughs> 6500 a house. So, just, okay, well, it's just to understand. It's and and I understand your reasoning, well. reasoning very well. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It makes you guys sense. pay money. Right. It's not like you're I'm not complaining. I just yeah. yeah. No, I love this town. Yep. Same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting how you have mm. the, these other past boards that made allowances, and then yeah. now we find ourselves <laughs> here. Right. And future yeah. boards will wonder why we did what we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and this is where we, we kind of push you a little bit on the test of, you know, if we trust our boards and we rely on our boards, yeah. you know, how do we navigate and, and find some degree of fairness? I guess that's really what, what we try to look towards. And if the ZBA okayed the 18 feet, I don't think, can anybody overturn, I don't think the select board can even overturn that. I know the planning board can. It usually the decision stands and yeah. it speaks for the town. Right. But I understand where folks are coming from. Yeah. I just think that some of this information was missed along the way. Well, yeah. you know, ten year gap. Who says, well, hey, let's go back 20 years in the minutes before we hear yeah. this case. Right. We just don't all have time to do that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, so thank you for doing that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time. I've been close to it for a while. And, yeah. you know, the whole subdivision oh. has been close to it for a while. Right. But even I didn't know, back in 2014, I didn't have all that information. Right. Well, I had said earlier about that 
road with, but hearing now that the state yeah. approves such a thing, sixteen and that nine. makes yeah. a big difference. Yeah, to me. Yeah. yeah. Now, Peter, um, were, are there any other deficiencies out there besides the the pavement thickness and the width? Oh, big block. Basically that. Because all the drainage the looks is, like we, it's pretty good and intact. Yeah. And the road bed looks like it was done yeah. fairly well because it's very wet out there. Yeah. And even with the winter that we just came yeah. off of and the storms lately, um, even just last night, it didn't seem to add to any de uh, additional decay no. right. to the road edges or anything, really. The only thing I worry about is if we accept it, that road ain't going to be like it is next spring. Because? Because that truck's is 50 to 60,000 pounds. The plows on that truck's big and heavy. With that thin pavement, it's just going to dig in. Put it's on gone. Side. Accept it like it is, it's going to cost the town within two years, if not less, to do something to it. And how far would 16000 go in town? Maybe eight bucks a ton, and it'll go far. That's what we're paying for about 6,000 tons being put down. So yeah. the town of Greenville just got a small job, and they're paying 125 bucks a ton. Wow. The more tonnage you put down, the cheaper it is. Yeah. And we wouldn't be able to put it in the road budget this year. It would have to wait till next year anyway. So would the plowing of the winter end up making it more expensive? That's what you're saying, right? Yes. We do have some smaller trucks. Can we just send them now? They got heavy plows on them, just like the big trucks. Yeah. They, that, not only that, but won't be just using the sand on it, be using the salt. So, you know, you put sand, you gotta sweep it up, then you gotta bring it someplace as a landfill to get rid of it. It's called, it's hazardous waste. And I don't know the discussions that the officers have had, so, um, but we have an <coughs> upcoming meeting, so I don't know if there's, you know, how do you stage the acceptance? Do you, you know, is there areas that we should be working on? Should we get our as built done? You know what I mean? I think that that's where some of the conditional stuff is. You know, do you look at saying that you take it next year and we get our, our usual plow, plowing through the winter? And I'm, I'm talking way out of school yeah, because no, I'm not. That's something know. that we even talked about is if, if it was to be taken, you know, we could delay when yeah. yes. I had the as built, so I would so. recommend. Uh, spot tester on the asphalt and sub base, see what's there. That way you have an idea. And they probably would do it as far as an as built anyway. Who's ever doing as built probably want to be, want to know what's exactly there mm -hmm. for material and for asphalt. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think this is where <coughs> life gets really life gets really messy, right? Because if 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 it's if it's going to be accepted, then some of that money that we have set aside. We certainly can can spend and even <coughs> talk with the other homeowners about additional costs that we may need to incur. But if 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 it's like, well, first we're going to core it, and then we're going to see what we get, and then and then all those things are added up, and then there's an eventual no. That really puts even more of a burden on us. Um, you know, are there things that you want to see? Areas that you want to see changed. I don't even know if we could get somebody to come in and do any significant repairs this year, but we could do some small repairs and go from there. And again, I'm talking. You should be. No, we uh, <clears throat> we definitely were looking at trying to get some spots repaired this year. We try to take care of the road and make sure that any issues get fixed. But like T said, if it's major work that needs to happen, we're probably not going to get somebody to come take a private job like that this year at this point. So. <clears throat> I know GDK is usually like six to seven months up, so. Yeah. I just thought I have an idea. That bigger patch that you guys had repaired, um, do you know what the rough cost was on that? The bigger patch was like six or six or $7,500. It was like $7,000, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, At it, one it point, we kind of got rough did, estimates to do the road, and it was like eighty five. Is that that big rectangular patch? Yeah. What's under it then? Uh, 
There was just road base, like gravel and stuff, but they dug it all up and they fixed it. <clears throat> That's why it looked nice. I mean, if you look at that compared yeah. to the other areas, it was done later, it was redone. Yeah. Peter, what would it cost? Either Peter. Um, so you, while we were out there, you had mentioned um, milling it or whatever you call it, and and doing a base coat and a top coat. What would that cost the town potentially? Just a ballpark. Hundred. It must be three quarters of a mile. It's about half per hand. Yeah, point so, six, point six. Yeah, just point six. I'm just saying, if we did the wide point plus the narrow point, so that's point six for the whole thing. I think so. Yeah, just the point six three. Kind of that. I'm, I'm gonna say between seventy five and hundred grand, maybe. Could be less. You don't know what the offer yeah, is gonna be. Right, but so that would be milling it up. Yep. Base coat, top yep. coat. Two two inches of base and an inch of top, or inch and a half of top. So it's not astronomical. So if it's something the town would think about doing with the homeowners would be willing to pay that eighty five thousand through taxes at ten years down the road. And split it up to how many houses? Like a betterment tax. Then you have town road. You know, whatever you sell your houses for, you can get more money for it. I, I think it certainly is something that folks would consider. Well, I'm just um, saying. But I guess the question is. <coughs> I'm just saying, if Slugin say, yeah, we'll take it, you know, we'll fix it for you for $85,000, you know, next year's budget, you know, then after that, we'll maintain it. You know, we won't maintain it until it's been paid. And my understanding was when we had that discussion initially, was that it wasn't it wasn't supposed to be a quid pro quo type of thing, and it was well we won't even consider that. So that was one of the things that we initially heard right. when we inquired about well now what do we do when we so, found ourselves as an HOA. So that was one of the past select boards. That yeah, said that. yeah, and I'm not saying that yeah. it means that it will now, but I would right. argue that you know we've been putting a whole lot into that road. And I could see, you know, we're back up to that $5,000 that we were at originally to say, when we originally looked at the cost benefit of that lawsuit was that each of us sunk in $5,000 $5, of, of what we paid for our home into that road and then never got that back. Mm -hmm. And so our contention was that anybody coming in new and getting those additional homes should have paid the additional $5,000, which would have paid for those remaining homes, would have paid the remainder of that road. So, I mean, I, I could see right now with, we've got a lot of people on fixed incomes that are retired. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, I think $5,000 per home would be a big ask, even over a bunch of years. Mm -hmm. I, I could see $2,000. I, I think that that might be a more reasonable <coughs> say to, to, way to say, you got to have skin in the game. And, and you, you got to survive another year with getting your own plow or whatever, you know, I, I could see that. Yeah, because there's going to be, right now it's about $600 a person a year just to plow the roads and keep a little bit to, for fixing the roads, so. <coughs> we try to build a couple thousand dollars a year in the kitty for future building of the roads. It, it'll never be enough, but. Right. People just, again, on fixed incomes, how do you do that? Right. <coughs> it definitely seems like, uh, I mean, just missing that top coat, you know, at that critical point, you know, years ago, <coughs> and this could yeah. be a much different conversation, but if there is some middle of the road that can be found, um, <coughs> I'd like to see us try to get it done um, for you guys. And I know Peter had mentioned, you know, that we'd have this onslaught of other developments that come in, you know, looking for acceptance as well, um, which may be true, but if we find the right mix of working with y'all and, you know, 
us trying to figure this out together, um, we could certainly use that as a template going forward um, just so that we can, you know, help our community members really, you know, that are in these, you know, tough situations. Um, so even if it's 600, well, we're assuming plowing prices would go up or anything else, $600 a year for even five years would get us, it, you know, is that, is that, would that be, and I'm, it's not let's make a deal, I'm just throwing that out there as, you know, where is, where, where and how long do we look at this? Mm -hmm. So you can do a betterment tax from one to 10 years, but then like, what if you sell your house and move like that? next person has to be aware that they're gonna yes yeah, some towns and i don't know <coughs> what the regs are i know um bernie had before we moved up here he had a betterment tax for sewer being put on his property and he had a five thousand dollar tax and he had to either cover it in increments and then when he sold his house right. it was before the end of his increments so he had to make himself whole uh, as part of the home sale oh, or so some, the next person right some get it. some people some towns <clears throat> make the rules in different states so that you, you can't carry over to the new one right i think it just depends on what the regs are and i don't know what latitude you have as a select board i got hard yeah. enough time keeping up with i was going to say I, and i've never looked into the <laughs> I mean, just the surface of betterment. But I, I, I think never... we would be willing to be yeah, the, the test idea. pilot case and see how we could make it work out. Mm -hmm. Like, we'd be willing to work with you guys on that for sure, yeah. And I mean, and some of us might even be willing to kick in up front, like, yeah. <clears throat> so. So, so this is like, the first time I've heard of a betterment tax. Mm. Me too. What is, explain somebody that? Somebody explain it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Is that what, what, is what, what it sounds like? Peter, <clears throat> are you more familiar with it? But it kind of sounds like if the town is going to put money into private property essentially that the private property owners would agree to pay that through a higher tax rate for one to ten years an annual right. increase in their yeah. taxes called yeah, the yeah so your property yeah. tax it's, would go up it's kind of long. it's it'll be on your tax bill but it'll be separate it'll yeah. be a separate, separate one okay. yeah and in the event that we sell well then we either have to settle that up or the owner, the new owner would... Right, I'd have to look into that because I guess be different states will different. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like, to me, the course would be that it would have to be made whole either through the sale or prior to the sale. Similar to a lien. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds like a, a good thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why that couldn't be something we talk about at our meeting, and I mean, if that would be something you guys are... So the outcome, if that were, to, uh, <clears throat> were decided upon, so we wouldn't see anything improve till next year, right? Yeah, because we don't have any more road budget this year. <clears throat> so we wouldn't well, be we able to... want them to take over the main maintenance of the road until after it was paved anyways. Because like Peter said, they're going to screw the road up royally in the winter with their plus. It's not a half ton, okay, three quarters yep, on truck. Yep, yep. You know, it's a... So we get, the road, we get the road fixed, <clears throat> then... The town takes it over. Conceptually, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's... But I guess the question is this, Peter, is are you saying it may not even, that we it wouldn't even be able to be paved? I think that's the the, uh -huh. the thing overhanging me, me right now. No, it can be fa paved, but I wouldn't pave over what you get there because it's not going to last. Well, no, I would yeah, just yeah. grind it up for two inches of Oh, that's paved. the milling. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's almost like a big roller till. Okay. Yeah. It mixes what's there into the gravel. Okay. And that's at the same width? Yes. Or this is we, where the lower cost or we, is good. we could put it two feet wider if you want to do a foot on each side. I don't think there's room with the setbacks. Unless you guys really want to do it, though. But I'm just there's saying, places where that road is, it doesn't need to be wide based on the wetlands. Yeah. Unless, again, it, you guys absolutely want me. Yeah, like over by my house, I would not really want to see it widen because it drops off drastically on both sides. Yeah. So <clears throat> the wider you go, the more cutback you have, the more erosion you're going to have. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I think we're making headway. So if you did the 600 that you're doing now <coughs> for five years, we'd be up close to 50,000. 20? Okay. That's what it is. 16 With the 16 houses. homes, yeah. And we're now officially and, all 60. And oh, 600. Would you then too, or would you guys No, yeah. well, I mean, I'd love it, but I'm not going to hold my breath. We're just driving right? that out. Yeah. 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 yeah, we can't pay the no, drive. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. So you guys have to <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> 
right. No, it, these guys watch out for us the way we watch no, out for them. I know. I'm so teasing. When we get a when we get a contract yeah. for plowing, we get we all get plowing. Right. I got a tractor. You just yeah. plow it. No yeah. problem. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie's got that. Bernie works it too. So. But yeah. so that wouldn't even hit the minimum estimate that um, Peter gave, which sounds like you guys had an estimate of eighty. 80,000. Yeah, I think it was 80, so. 80, 85, somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, and that's where. Which is right in the middle. Like of the where that betterment tax comes in. Yeah. Like, because then the town would be covering that other portion and then increasing the taxes, right? Well, the town would front it. Yeah. Pay that's what I mean. Whole, yeah, yeah. Like, pay the whole thing. And right. Then, yeah. yeah. Does that have to go to a meeting? Town meeting? I don't know offhand if. And I'm not sure, like, once you say tax, I automatically think tax collector and yeah, assessors. And yeah, well, I, I don't think that's what it does. I think you guys start the ball rolling, but then yeah, we I don't get it, it over to the assessors. Yeah. yeah. What would it be if we went seven years on it? Would that be closer to... <clears throat> what was the... Well, in part... I'm, oh, I, I misunderstood what you're calculating. So our 67, 67 right? yeah. 67, too. Yeah. But I also... From a, from a fairness perspective, I think asking us to pave it all when the town messed up on some of the bonding <coughs> issues, I, I could see a shared responsibility here. And I also, to add to that, the town gave you guys occupancy permits, which I feel like... They shouldn't have. <laughs> well... Well, the, the, No, I mean, I think everybody's happy where they live. Oh, right? yeah, we all love yeah. where we live. Yeah. 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 But, so, I'm just saying that oh, in that sense, there is a shared responsibility there. And, and I get the feeling that you guys, like if I was you, I'd feel like I was left holding the bag. We're, we, mm -hmm. We've sure. tried to stay on the high road, but we do grumble. I won't, I won't say we don't grumble. Yeah. But there's, there's suitable grumbling, and there was some serious <laughs> frustration along the way. But. Well, especially if you were told it was going to be a town road. And yeah, I've heard that from every single resident on that road. But the realtors do that to everybody on a private road. Oh, okay. but how? <laughs> how the realtor that sold me my house lives in this town. Yeah, how do you well, know? <laughs> the business I was in. He does it to everybody on another road. I know, I know exactly. Well, we Gee, tried to, the planning board has, to, in, in, all, in all importantness, the planning board has made some strides about when an HOA is developed in the future or how it. But I think there's been such a bad taste in everybody's mouth that there hasn't been a significant size subdivision since 2000. Cravens was a leftover from the yeah. 2007 plan. Yeah. There hasn't been a big subdivision in over six or seven years. I think the whole road issue puts it. That's yeah. why I think, you know, if we can find a way to get through some of this, I'm, I'm, I still think bonding is really important or security is really important. And we can find a way to do that well when it comes up again. But it's definitely a, a, a tricky topic. Mm. But I also feel, and I've said this at the other meeting, if the, if the planning board, the town, is requiring people to build a road in a subdivision to class 5 standards, I don't understand <coughs> why we wouldn't, why are we going to make that builder spend all that money extra money to build it to our standards if we're not going to accept it. And again, there have been a, a number you know, of like miserable... I feel like it should be accepted. There have been a number of miserable lawsuits the town has been involved in that probably made mm -hmm. people very puck shy. Um, I don't. Yeah. I moved here after the whole Green Crow yeah. thing, but I, I understand that people got really defensive. That was bad. And maybe it was a castle kind of mentality of leave us alone, we, we've got yeah. a town that we love. And, yeah. I, and that's why I brought some of that macro stuff of the private road experiment, mm -hmm. and now people are realizing it doesn't work. But also the <coughs> towns are saying, hey, this isn't our biggest expense. Right. How do we do it, how do we do right by our townspeople? Mm -hmm. And I think finding a way to do that, um, and, and, and I think it, has, it was also the planning board had some backlash to where when I go back and read old minutes, the roads were built first. They weren't built last. They were oh. built first. So I think High Range and Cascade, they had a they had a base coat down yeah, as they were building, and then they eventually put in a um, 
Then they eventually finish paving it before they even finish building. So, and, and one of the things that we heard on the planning board was you can bring in heavy equipment on trailers. Right. And not damage a road. So go ahead and get it paved. So you're not getting down to the last couple of lots saying, well, there's still homes to be done. Well, there's still, there are subdivisions out there that are 20 years old with the last homes that have never been built and the road hasn't been finished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're right. just sitting in limbo. Right. So in, maybe we need to go back. Switch. Yeah, yeah. We, maybe we need to go back and say the road has to be to those 2010, 2001, 2002 times right. where we say you build the road first. You yeah. know, for each phase, you build the road first, and then you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I it's it just it's a hard thing to figure yeah. out and be human along the way, and there's pressure mm -hmm. on on every end. Or tell the builders they can't get COs for their houses if the if the road's not. Well, done. but that doesn't help if the builders sell the lots. It will help them get the road done before. Well, oh, but, I see what you're saying. They right. sell the lot. They're not not the, not the builders don't always build all the homes. <coughs> homes in a development. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, so anyways, we're getting to playing yeah. your weeds. But right. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. We'll keep this one from 11 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, you guys have some things to discuss, like at your next meeting. Uh, we have some things to look into, the uh, betterment tax, and, yeah. um, and try to find, like, a good... Um, yeah, even compromise. Common ground would be great. Right. Yeah, just and then start and then hopefully try to, try to map out <clears throat> how we could um, accept other roads down the, down the line, too. Set a precedent. Yeah. So, I think last week we were going to get a, um, lit, a list from the state of what our private roads were. No. Um, is that on the Dropbox? It, there was a list in there because we were talking about the private roads. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. What is a private Those road? Those were time reason? roads. That was the purpose of that. So I'm trying to get a handle on <coughs> one comment that you made that How many Gore private roads are there? Is, are you opening the floodgates to how many other roads in town? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what I'm trying to get a handle on. Yeah. But then, we'll, so this we'll isn't just a blanket, and nothing's been accepted, nothing's been decided tonight, right. but it wasn't and isn't going to be decided that the town would incur 100% of the cost. Like, we're going to find some compromise so that even if that is the case, there's going to be <laughs> shared. And it would be an individual. Yeah, so each one that comes case. before us, right. yeah, we'll have to try to apply this roadmap template, so to yeah. speak a yeah, template to that agreement mm. um, like if somebody who's who lives on a private road and their road was built to class five standards and it's it's perfectly fine then no problem they story. don't need to you know what i mean yeah. right if that's what you're saying but if it's not built to the town specs or in this case with exceptions yeah then then those residents would have to pony up some money to bring it somewhere close to what it needs to be. Yeah. And that's even progress from where we where we were back in 2014. Right. It really is because it was, you know, well, no, you guys finish it and then we'll think about it, you know. So I, I yeah. think this is a just the fact that we, we might come to a way that it can be reconciled is, is progress. Yeah. No. Um, I was going to ask you if you had a, a term, betterment tax, came up. Yes. And I, I was involved with a large subdivision in, the, in another town uh, where the road didn't get done. And uh, a lawyer from Cape Cod had taken over the subdivision, but he wasn't going to do anything. And so what we did was we, uh, I guess the best way to put it is we revoked the subdivision. We took all the remaining lots, even if they weren't next to each other, that were unsold, and tied them all together in one big piece. So he, he lost that. And then we put the road in for the veteran assessment. We, we tied the veteran assessment to frontage. Get the picture? Yeah. He bought the road. Yeah. And it worked. I mean, so he, each one could be unique and different, but you can play with a better assessment. And we go by front of you. You can also revoke the existing lots. 
the if they're not model. built on. That would have been the decision, the 2014 decision yeah. that the planning board didn't choose. I mean, so there, there's, there's creative things you can do, but right. each, each one's unique. Right. <clears throat> All these lots are sold and occupied. So I can, I can yeah. understand if the road isn't done. I don't want a road that's not done to do. <laughs> so this yeah. betterment tax, you said it was tied to frontage. Is that always the case, or can a town structure it how it sees fit? Because I'm sure I'm these people sure we, don't all have equal well, we frontage. Were, what we were able to do, and it stood up in court, was we used the frontage. We took the whole number of feet of frontage of this thing. We divided up. Your betterment tax over seven years is going to be this. Oh, I see. Based on your frontage. And we, we had them pay it off in seven years. Could we do it just by lot, by equal division by lot, Jim? What do you mean to do it Could it be lot? done by a betterment tax by there's 20 properties and you divide the amount by 20? Does it have to be done by frontage? No, it doesn't have to be, but, the, but, but, but frontage was considered equitable. Okay. Okay, if the frontages are all close to each other, then who cares? And, and, and it could be done over a six or seven year period. Yeah, I think the challenge with us is we have some very long frontages mm -hmm. that are very shallow. Mm -hmm. Like when yeah. we were walking. Oh, yeah, I was yeah, just, yeah, I was just <laughs> thinking that. Yeah. He's got like He's half that five loop. acres, but it's all like this wide. From here to the so long, yeah. yeah. What so it sounds what, to me like is that's something that the HOA would come to us and tell us. Yeah, because this wouldn't be, yeah. like he was mentioning, that was a lawsuit they took away the, the development. I think the 20, 20 house division would be the, <coughs> excuse me, the way to go total. Totally yeah, divided. it seems like divided. Divided. We've, we've always been, been we've yeah. always tried to it's balance. Yeah, I think we've always tried to balance the best. The okay. okay, so you guys are going to talk about it at your next HOA meeting. We're going to do a little looking into betterment and maybe a process or how this could work and we'll reconvene. So in the meantime, do we want to get a core sample so we know? Well, I don't want to have them go through that if we can't see a possible end. However, so you could, on your own, yeah. decide we're going to get these core samples because eventually they're going to want them. Um, that would be up to you guys. Mm -hmm. If you had them by yeah. a uh, stent engineer, then... Well, they should do an as-built, right? Didn't we However that goes. They should have an as-built. Well, as -built. the yeah, as-builts are probably going to cost us a couple thousand bucks. Right. I, I would... Say we, we need to get in the hopper now for the fall. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll get bills, core yeah. samples, like yes. all things that'll be. Mm -hmm. Right. Be, yeah. So when do we want, when's your meeting? Your HOA meeting? We haven't scheduled it yet, but um, John will be back next week. Mark, we'll meet as a board and then we'll schedule a meeting. Yeah, probably okay. another two so, weeks. So, I mean, that being said, you understand, Dee explained very well what we're up against here. And oh, Sean yeah. saying he'd like to have a public hearing, I think, is much more justified hearing the whole story. Yeah. Um, so anything that you do, I'm not advising you to get it. it just a thought that popped in yeah. my head. If I was you, I would think Wouldn't hurt. It. <laughs> um, do you want to schedule it the next time you come here to, like, August 15th type of thing? Or, or is that too far away? Our meeting was usually in July, yeah. so yeah. we'll probably do a meeting in, towards later July, a okay. couple weeks, and then, so August 15th probably would be. Well, the, well there's, the, there's the 1st, the 8th, or the 15th? 15th. 15th? I'm out of state for the 15th, but you guys. Oh, that's right, too. We're welcome to do whatever you want. The 8th? Yeah. 8th? 8th, I'm here. Yeah. 8th, 8th. Okay. We may not have everything done, but we'll have a plan. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think that's kind of just what, you guys what we're going for as a plan, yeah. yeah. So August 8th at... I can see if I can call on some favors and get some of the... What time? Time? Um, 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock? Or, and we, are we going to do that as a public hearing? Yeah, and usually I like to do the public hearings at 7, seven. so that people can kind of get home have dinner and... Yep. You know, okay. And we just sit here and suffer. Wasn't there a <laughs> Word article on um, in pizza. Peterborough that yeah. we couldn't do... Uh, if, I think it failed that you, they didn't want any uh, meetings during... Supper to putting kids to bed on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so August 8th at 7. I am curious, though, um, so just what this board's feeling is on how much should this go forward? How much should the HOA 
pitch in uh, that Amentex? Do you feel like 100% of improvements? Or? I'd say it's too early to, uh, to even consider that. Why? Simply because it's too early. We don't know what we're in for. Mm -hmm. Well, where I'm at, like where the base is, you know, <coughs> one of the points to walking the road is to take a look at like how that infrastructure has held up over the last however many years. Mm -hmm. In this case, some portions almost 20 years. Other portions, you know, what, seven, eight years, something like that? Nine years. Uh, no, the JDK portions aren't. Uh, yeah, yeah, the JDK. Yeah, those were. Years. Yeah, newer, yeah. yeah. Um, so to me, it, I feel fairly confident in what we looked at today. Um, so I'm kind of in that for like a 50 50. You know, maybe even like a little bit more than fifty percent that they would share. Mm. You know, because that was that. I'm just kind of basing that off of what was missing initially. Like that top coat um, is roughly fifty percent. You know, and we wouldn't even be having this this lengthy of a discussion at this point, really. I don't think um, had that been done, and mm. the um, pavement would look even better if that had been done. And, so, yeah, I would, yeah, I would be very similar to that line of thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, did you have anything else you wanted to say at this time, Lou? You've been Nothing that I want to speak about in public session. <laughs> well, unless it's you're going to be speaking ill of somebody. No. No, like your no. comments would be. I, th I think there, there's. It's, a, it's the kind of thing that we need to look at everything and decide, you know, how much money is going to be spent, what we can do, what we shouldn't do, or what we should do. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, rather than throw it out as what ifs here, um, I think that we should, amongst ourselves, kind of come up with an agreement on things and then talk about the what ifs. Okay. Yeah, and I wasn't calling <coughs> for a motion to say this is No, it wasn't a motion, but thoughts. you're already talking about 50-50, all right? Yeah. And so you're, or you're, you've already got a mindset, mm -hmm. whereas we haven't looked at all the information um, that's available yet. Mm -hmm. oh, that's fair enough. Fair enough. I felt a good comfortable point. with what seeing yeah. you know, what we saw today and even that background that you gave D um, was very valuable. Yeah. It was very condensed. You will find there is plenty to read. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was I knew if I pulled up five pages you guys were gonna shoot me. So I figured I would give it I just made the print bigger, it would have been two, so okay. Yeah, I to be honest, uh, I'm with you and I think I mentioned it in the previous meeting that the condition of the road was actually quite good. And um, and um, the part about the top coat never having been put on um, surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, all the cracks and that were fixed and other than that one <coughs> patch, which I thought, you know, maybe there was a car buried under there. <laughs> <laughs> That's where or an elephant or something, <laughs> or something like that. But, you know, um, uh, the, the, like I said, the road did not look like it's in that bad of shape, but uh, Peter brought up a good thing. You know, we need to see what what's in the base also. Was that done properly? Uh, the road seems to have held up quite well for that. Especially considering there was two areas where the pavement was gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing a half to three quarters of an inch thickness at the crown of the road. And when I, when I look at that, yeah, it was very deficient when it was done, but it held up really in well. spite of that is yeah. something that... It really had a nice crown on it. By the when, way. when we moved in there in 2007, we were the second house. George's house with the fence around it was the first. We looked at that house and said to Charlie, the developer, we like something else. So at that point, there was just a short section of road. He built all that up. If you walked around that, there's one heck of a, 
a buildup under that because you got a four foot drop on either side all yep. the way around that loop. Yep. Mm. So that's built up like crazy. Yeah. Uh, but he didn't put that second coat on. Yeah. Do you know who the first builder was? Jolly Watt. Jolly from, uh, Watt. Pepperell. He oh. built seven ho um, seven houses. Well, Is that Watt with an S at the end? Farmhouse. Oh, the farmhouse, yeah. Six houses with the farmhouse. And uh, he he was uh, a conscientious. He just mismanaged his monies and uh, went bankrupt. Mm. Sandkin came in and bought the rest of those nine lots for 125k. Yeah. Believe that? Mm -hmm. uh, that yep. were the days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So look forward to seeing you guys at the latest on uh, August. 8th, 8th at 7 p.m. for the public hearing um, but any information that you want to share soon, like sooner than that please you know uh, send it to Debbie and she'll make sure she gets it to us. Do you want me to put that in the paper? Yep. The public hearing? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. All right. Cool. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Thank you guys. <coughs> okay. Have a good night. <coughs> Thank you, Peter. So stay late. Late. Oh yeah, can you um yeah. make me a copy of that on your way out? I'll send or, it to you. Okay. That way you can just Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night. Thanks, Thanks, nice. too. I'll put it in overtime. Put it for overtime. <laughs> you didn't get here till three. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Peter. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Have a good night, Peter. Thank you, sir. So is this something that would be put on the town website as well for the public hearing, or is it only the paper? Uh, hmm. We'll put it on the paper, and the agenda will be on the website. Uh, okay, yeah. But just so the agenda. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. But I'll right. let you guys know, too. Um, we haven't had a sit-down oh, yeah, with you too. on how things are going. I don't know when you would, when or if. I yeah. Know we, we said we are going to do that monthly. Yeah. 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 Uh, Would it be possible to do like your next meeting or the eleventh? Uh, probably not the eleventh. Uh, so well, the other thing too is, 18. does it have to be at the 18. like at a select meeting? Or could it be at a different time? It wouldn't have to be. I can I can sit with you, although I think it'd be beneficial. For yeah. The or to just just to get a progress of the meeting. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, because we're you know. <clears throat> The, within like the first week of August, we we're looking to you know make a decision. Hopefully, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. So anything that you can give us a I'm trying to think the eleventh. I feel like there's already some things that we have a lot in front of the. Is, a lot. is there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That brings us right to the end of August. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But we do have all of July. Well, that's what I'm saying. July 11th and July 18th, we have a lot of stuff. So, okay. And the 18th is the... Um, about the second week in August. State reps. Also. Uh, yeah, yeah. 18th state reps. I guess off the cuff, how you feeling? Off the cuff. Yeah, no. Um, it's... Uh, Exciting, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, still, spot, still, uh, yeah. it's you know anticipation too of how it's gonna be really, you know, yeah. until it's full. Um, but with Pete being on different times here, a little bit here and there, and whatever, um, you know, I've gotten more of the taste of what it's what it's like. Yep. Um, Step you know. right up. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, your, that's taking your assessment. That's my assessment. Yep. There's you know, it's looking for his first <laughs> self assessment first, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, you know, he's had me do different things, like even with, uh, um, with hiring and stuff like that too. Um, just having me schedule things and, you know, just like, Hey, why don't you order this? And, you know, doing things that he normally would be doing. Yeah. That's good. So, um, you know, with ordering different things or even just like, um, doing a uh, doctor resources. appointment for a physical for a new hire, you know, yeah. taking care of all that. So I'm communicating with the new hire and, you know, 
And were you part of the interview process as well? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually had an interview with a guy and um, just last week, and he was actually going to come in and do the paperwork to work at the transfer station, but then he canceled on his end. Um, so. And some um, human resources things. <laughs> what? Human resources things. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That so. you know can be uncomfortable, but. Yeah, yeah. So there's been different things that have yeah. come my way, but um, yeah, it's I'm just feeling like I can take over when it comes. You know, <laughs> you're looking forward to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not dreading. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's hesitation there. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's just that I, I don't want to make it like, you know what I mean? Like, I know this is a big responsibility, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I don't want to set anybody up for failure, and I don't want to set myself up for failure either, you know? Right. I'm one that, I'm a perfectionist, so I like things to be right and done right, you know, and to do it the right way the first time, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, um, but yeah, it also I just don't want to, you know, I'm not wanting to look at this situation lightly. You know, this is, it's a big step for me in life, you know. Yeah. It's uh, definitely, and uh, a lot of change that we've had down there yeah. in this year. And just, and the year ain't over yet, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And have you seen anything you'd like us to assist you with? I volunteered to cut grass. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just said that when you're over there. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not talking about that. I yeah, mean, anything no. within no. our purview. Yeah. yeah. No, I want to just point out it there to you. Like, oh, yeah, I, 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 we are here. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've gotten uh, you know in that respect for help, you know, all good positive feedback. You know that if I needed something, I could ask whatever. You know, yep. from you. Um, uh, even like Gary Johnson, he's offered that he's like, hey, do you have anything? You know, just let me know. Just good. If you have questions on stuff or whatever. You know, he's been around this area for a while. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I also have like Ben Hatcher. He's like, hey, if you guys need anything over there, just let me know. Was, you know, I've had. So you feel supported. Uh, yeah. This. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. From a variety of people. Mm -hmm. So. Excellent. Good. Yeah. Good here. So yeah, and it's and, you know if there's something I'm doing wrong or whatever, it is don't be afraid to tell me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> They'll you know, correct it and correct it quick and yeah. soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Right. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah. There's um there well I don't know if this is, would be the time place to talk about it, but um uh just something that Jason had brought up a while back about the transfer station deal and you probably know kind of what I'm talking about. Maybe. Yeah, allowing different activities up there. Oh, yeah, other yeah, than yeah, what yeah. it's allowed oh, the for. RC yeah. 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 Is that something that's like really pressing or well, not? Because it's like, it seems like it was like about two years ago that it kind of it came was. up about. Yeah. So, I mean, there's been some time under that too, so. Yeah, and I would hesitate. That's what I told you on that. I'd hesitate to start filing for permits until we have a, an actual interest. Um, yeah. yeah. There's a bit of work that would need to be done on their end as far as I can see. I hope they yeah. understand that if they're yeah. listening to this right now. Yeah. 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 And, and the other thing, uh, I would like, uh, on something like that, um, open up something where the town could be liable for yeah, all different of that things, was, you know? That's the first question that so, these guys yeah. ask mm -hmm. about his life. And the other th question that, uh, or uh, another aspect of it was that Pete mentioned was um, that even DES may not even allow something like that. Yeah, that's where you file for the take in place, you know, right. at that location. That's right. And that's where the application would come in, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, that's how yeah. it would go. Yeah. That's what it sounded like, but there is a process for it, and you do yeah. have to get those, you know, state approvals too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, we're definitely going to go through that full process.
process and review of that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the way, so the way it sits now is it's in that potential club's hands and what they would like to do with it. Like we're not, mm -hmm. we're not going to drive it forward. They have to drive that forward. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So okay. they did. They did. Were you there that night when they came? I don't Maybe think so. you weren't. So yeah, they did no. say um, Hudson, New Hampshire has it on their has it. Bill. Okay. They do exactly what these guys are looking at. Mm -hmm. you know, so there is uh, precedent. Yeah. Yeah. Precedent. Yeah. yeah. Precedent of it. Okay. Yeah. And he was familiar with the paperwork that was done mm -hmm. in order yeah. to get that granted. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So basically, kind of like what I'm feeling like, I just don't want to take something on some like. Basically, the feeling I got from Pete was like, you know, he didn't want to do anything with it. But, and then, I, yeah, I get it too because he's going to be leaving. So it was like, you know, yeah. you take care of it. Here, I'll let you do it. <laughs> and it was like, well, am I just taking it just because I'm somebody different that maybe would allow it to take place, you know? And it's like, I don't want to just take no. something on and be like, uh oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. As it wouldn't be up to you. you. Yeah, there's nothing really for you to take on necessarily. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. the only thing, the only place yeah. you would come in is filling out the application because it would have to be done by. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then also the monitoring who is up there, kind of like like right now, we yeah. kind of have a grip on mm -hmm. who goes in and out of there, you know, yeah. versus you start leaving other groups in there, then that's like, uh oh, you know. Well, maybe not uh oh, but that's like, part of the. Like, that's a whole part of. The coming step. Yeah, yeah. so and that like people Sean's have understanding of, yeah, you know, like, yeah they are allowed to be in here. Okay, okay. that's okay, right. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like Sean said at our site walk out there, there's a lot of things, a lot of what ifs that you could start yeah. trying to hash out, and it may not be necessary because yeah. they, they'll all, I think exactly. they would all naturally occur. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that would, all when occur. we meet with those people again, mm -hmm. we'll invite you to the meeting. Yeah, so yeah. You get a better yeah. idea. Yeah, right. what's. Okay, exactly they've those. already got the plan for the uh, liability insurance coverage. Okay. Okay, yeah. so, um, okay. and that's part of the club thing. <coughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, and I, mean, I, I am, want you to feel comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, you know, I would be willing to work with it and with um, those conditions. Yeah. You know, that it sounds like, you yeah. know, they're covering all their bases. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah, and, and it would be. So I have a better understanding of it now. It would be that way. You wouldn't have responsibility. Okay. Um, yeah. It wouldn't be like this is Peter's thing that mm -hmm. he allowed to happen. Yeah. It would be the selectmen allow it, mm -hmm. as far as I understand it. And then you, we would agree, we would definitely want your input. Mm -hmm. on and then it would be ultimately the uh, DES's decision then? How or ultimately or? it would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And really, it's a good thing if mm -hmm. we can find a way uh, to have this be allowed. Yeah, um, and get this group going, like to allow them to form a group and mm -hmm. have something like that going in our community is yeah. enriching. Like it's a good thing for yeah. our, our community members to mm -hmm. be able to do, and then bring other people into the town, like to have a good experience as well. Yeah, and it it's kind really, of gives a little more freedom, I guess, yeah. or something, you know, or like because yeah, at the end like, of the day, they pay for it. Yeah, like we all pay for yeah. that. Yeah, and so exactly. Yeah. And if we Maybe putting it into it. better use, yeah. I guess, yeah. as well, or a different use. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Um, but all valid concerns and all great things to hear from a, a potential future manager. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks for coming in, Peter. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Good night. Have a good night. Thanks, night. Yeah. Good night. Thanks for staying. Yeah. No problem. Jim. I didn't get the paperwork out to you because my printer went down. Okay. So it, you'll have it tomorrow. Okay. <coughs> Reading up here. Mr. Coffee, Mr. Samaro. Okay. I think with the two of us here, you know the location we're talking about. Absolutely. Yes. And okay. the stare that we're getting from Earl. Okay. Over his glasses. I just want to, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Am I missing something? What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Do we, have, got, do we have scheduled time at the table? Back in my seat. This, no. is a, this is the no. round table. All it's, the new business. Yeah. yeah. So we yeah. have a round table. It's Come on and have a seat. Well, it <laughs> needs to be read that maybe you need a chainsaw or something. But anyway, yeah. This is very quick. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The solution is not quick. But the reason I'm here yeah. will be 
very quick. Uh, some time ago, in the distant past, I raised the issue when David Lady was the chairman of a property in town that's being used by a trucking company. I did bring in, at one point, a letter, and I know, Lou, you have a copy of it. Okay. Is it dated, was it 2021, is it dated? Uh, that was when I first got elected. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 2020 or something like that. Yeah, okay, so 2020, 2021. Okay. I never got an answer. I got comments, but I never got a written answer. And what, what really the complaint was, was quite simple. The complaint was that that property is being used commercially without a site plan approval and without a special exception by a registered in the state of New Hampshire business, which is an interstate trucking company. It's not necessarily a home occupation because the last I knew, and I don't keep track of it, the person who owns the trucking company on the, the land didn't live in the house, he lived in Greenville. So, what is my next step? My next step is if a person, a citizen, uh, sees what they believe to be a violation you know, of some significance, and they give it to the selectman, and the selectman do little or nothing about it, the next step is to go to the ZBA. Just like a person who got denied a building permit would go to the ZBA. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I intend to go to the ZBA. Uh, maybe bring a couple more with me, okay. Because, uh, I you know, Jason, you know, we, you're, you're familiar with some of the places I looked at. There's four or five places in town that make the town look really trashy. But they don't, they needn't be that way. And, and sometimes you can work with people. But in this particular one, it is, you know, uh, I know it was given to the code enforcement or building inspector, and there were a couple of trips or a trip or two that were taken out there and nothing got, nothing went anywhere. So I have to conclude, unless I get something this week, I have to conclude that the selectmen have effectively denied my let's call it concern about that particular property and its use. So we because did, I, you, never, you never responded, okay? I never got an answer back. Yeah, and I know Code Enforcement's went out a couple times and he has said that there was no violations. I disagree. Mm -hmm. I, I, disagree. I have to disagree with that also oh, because wow. there was a... Well, I'm just... I, a cease I'm and not. desist letter sent and it was... Uh, there was never any response to it. There was uh, a letter from Code Enforcement uh, at the time that listed a whole bunch of violations, and there's not no follow up. Are we all talking about the same place? Yeah. I don't think we are. The the ambulance uh, maybe the uh, internet tra uh, transportation. Down by the ambulance. Yeah, this, yeah. this side is the right? Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty simple. You have to have a special exception to operate a business. Mm -hmm. If you don't live there, it's certainly not a home business. Your home's in Greenville. Okay? Uh, I suppose somebody can move, but that still doesn't make a, a home occupation. It's, not, it's supposed to be relatively invisible to, to the, the neighborhood. This is not invisible. The other thing too that I don't know if anybody's looked into is, is uh, and this is in state law, illegal excavations. I mean, we got we got we got a cliff behind this house. You you're more familiar with it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I I took over my brother's house after he passed away, so I guess I'm an abutter to this property, and I'm I'm beside myself. My my son is also an abutter to the property. I mean, he's out there at six, 6 o'clock Sunday morning digging and digging and digging. My wife and I went to see him in April 21, uh, 21, two years ago, I think it was, 
funny, baby. And we said, well, where are you going? What are you doing? Oh, he says, well, I got a drainage problem. I got water coming into my basement. I mean, he could have taken a whole, you know, <laughs> bank village pond and, <laughs> you know, for the, the amount of excavating he was doing, it's like, you know, what is he, and I kept asking him, what are you doing? He's, he's made a cut in the in the bank and I don't know what is, he must be selling the, uh, the, the uh, material. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it's going, but there's a big, from the back of my brother's house right now, there's a big, not even a 45 degree slope, but it's like this. And you, you can go down about 40 feet. That's safety, if nothing else, that's safety. My brother lives there, he's 91 years old. He goes out walking, how, how, do, you, how do I know where I'll find him someday? I brought, this to, I brought this to his attention, you know, his response was, <coughs> oh, we moved here, this is New Hampshire, we can live free or die. Live free or die. Well, he might be living, wanting to live free, but no, given me my, uh, what is that, right of... Uh, live free or die doesn't mean disrespect for your neighbor. Either. Well, no, it doesn't. Live free or die means that if you're going to be a citizen of this, this country, right. then do everything legally and try to help your neighbors, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just... So anyway, my, my intent is to file basically an appeal to the board's non-decision. But... There's no decision from this board in, in writing that ever came to me. There was <coughs> comments made to me. Like if well, we enforce this, then we got to go after everybody who's got a pickup truck and they're self-employed. Okay. No, no, no. That's that's not true. Okay, uh, you don't. I mean, you, you also don't ticket everybody who's one mile an hour over the speed limit because if we if we give traffic tickets. Okay. I know it's a two extreme scenarios, and I remember that comment, you yeah. know, specifically. But at the same point, you speak to a whole ton of violations, I'd love to see that because all we ever got from Rick was that there, in regards to the fill and the excavating, it wasn't against. You're, you're, you're in a different, you're in, a yeah. different you're, you're, you're in the right church, but you're in the wrong pew. Okay. I understand that. There yeah. probably are some there. Yeah. The biggest one I'm looking at is the failure to get an approval to operate a business there mm -hmm. from the Zoning Board of Adjustment. And if they got a permission, then it'd have to be a site plan. That That's required for that type of business. What, and we know what he's in the business. Of, because he has an 18-wheeler in his yard? He, he's he's running, running, I, I don't know, I'm asking. That was the only rocks, thing I ever heard. He has a pile heard. of rocks in his, in, on his property that what? keeps moving. I don't know, he's going somewhere, whatever. But he's talking about a business, we're not talking that's, about... Uh, that's his business, you asked about he, what his business is. He sells rocks. His business, you it's can whatever he wants to do. He, now he's got huge log, uh, logs in, in his property. I don't know where that's going, I don't know what he's doing with that. Where's he getting it from? I mean, worried, huh? you don't do that as a as a hobby if you own a you know a private property. I, have, I got in business from the state of New Hampshire. He registered with the state of New Hampshire. Okay. He registered the name of his business and what his business does. What is his business too? It's a trucking company, an interstate trucking company. No, it, um, yeah, the name of it is Internet uh, Trucking Services. Okay. So and I gave you all I, copies. I will, I will you send you copies of that stuff from me. I will send you a copy of the paperwork. <clears throat> I wasn't okay. here then. I, I so I'm just. I, I mean, I know I've heard of it, but I don't know the yeah. background. Yeah. So I just wanted. So to Jim, if I might, um, what was your requested action of the board, or was there? They enforce zoning. To enforce zoning, and so we had our zoning enforcement officer go out. He reports to you. He, re there were reports at that time of setback issues because the, um, uh, the setback from the highway that was being violated initially. Um, looking at now, um, this is different, is that um, there seems to be a, 
setback incursion on uh, Furnace Brook uh, from looking at the GIS uh, satellite images. I have a picture of the polluted water flowing into the stream. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know how detailed you need to get. But well, that's the whole thing. And it, it, there's, there's just a lot of things going on. So my next step is simply to uh, get uh, Gary to get permission to go on the land, take a look at things for himself. Um, Tim has already um, uh, been in contact with uh, DES. So that part is starting to go there, and I'm staying out of that part for the time being. All right, but it just seems that there's, you know, there's a lot of things that had gone on in, in the, um, in fact, the legal, um, Gary Kenyon from mm -hmm. uh, from uh, uh, one of our legal representatives uh, sent a um, um, some paperwork in uh, on it and it was never uh, which I guess was a cease and desist order and it was never um, responded to because even though the company had the, was it 455 or 445? 455 Turnpike Road as their mailing <coughs> address, um, the driver had said, or the guy who owns it said, oh, I don't live there. I live over in Greenville and I don't, uh, and I didn't get it in my mailbox. So, you know, there's just, they. I just interject when you get done. I'm sorry, what? I just wanted to check something when you get done. Um, so there's a lot of things that just seem incomplete. And it seemed that all things came to an end of, um, without any responses, right around 2020. And, uh, and they actually go back to, well, the company started in 2006. Um, there was some stuff going on between 2010 and 2012, and then things got real quiet until uh, 2020, 21. So you can have a business registered to your home address and have it? Home business. If he was running, if he had a desk and a computer and a phone, he was running it from there. And hadn't altered the terrain, okay, then nobody, nobody would be the wiser and there's, right. no, there's no problem. But the fact of the matter is, is that he's operating a business there. The vehicles that are, that would be used in that type of business are frequently parked there. And if he had gone when he started to the ZBA to get, a, you know, approval to run that business there, all this other stuff you're talking about would have been ferreted out. In other words, how close can you come to the brook? What can you do here? I want to excavate half the hill behind the, behind the house and create a cliff. <coughs> Give me a site plan. The, the problem I have is that that process didn't take place. That's a slam dunk. Because you're not, you're not going to quibble about how far you went moving this cell or this or that. You don't have permission to, to, to run a business here. <coughs> and it's a trucking company. So if he wasn't running a business, but he was doing all the other stuff, it would be fine? No. I'm, no. I'm just asking the question. No, 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 no. Not according to the complaint. No, no, no. Not, not, I, the things he's done with the land, no. Okay. But if all he did was move into the house and have a, a computer. Right. And he was scheduling stuff, and the vehicles were parked somewhere else. We got tons of people doing that kind of stuff in this town. Yeah. That's fine. Right. All you got is a computer. Right. Okay. No, I get that part of it. I'm talking about the excavation. I think one thing to look at with the excavation, there are excavation laws by the state of New Hampshire, and they got to do with safety. Mm -hmm. One of them is you can't leave a foundation open for more than a certain period of time, a cellar hole. Now, we all know we can go in the woods and find stone cellar holes from 200 years ago. Uh, 
Those aren't usually included. Does he have a seller role? Filling them in. Huh? Does he have a seller role? No, I just mentioned that as, as one thing the state does regulate. No, 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 he doesn't right. have any seller role. No. Okay. He keeps getting piles of, piles of stuff, whatever he can gather there, and then move it out in the truck. Probably in the truck. Yeah. He's probably if selling his stuff. If I could bring this and back. And if he's selling his stuff, yeah, where's the please. revenue for the town? Um, it sounds like when you first came in, you said the board made a decision by not responding to a letter. And I think if we've been deficient in that aspect, uh, we need to correct it and respond. And Sean has brought this up in the last few meetings that we need to be more official in that regard. Um, I wouldn't try to dissuade you from going to the ZBA. Um, as far as an official response, what what that would, in my mind, what it would require is what Lou's saying, that we follow up on the act, yeah. the actions that were taken, but, and then we summarize it and respond. But you could give me five pages of comments about what he's done with the land. Okay, that, that might be fine. Okay. But that's not my original complaint. My original complaint, he didn't go through the process. That's my complaint. And if it had he gone through the process, all this other stuff would have been addressed. That's why the process was there. Mm -hmm. But if they found that there was no evidence of a business, then there's nothing to, no process to go through. That, I think this thing's a two-fold sure two two thing. So thing. Yeah. One, it's Jim is bringing out the fact of a business running, right. and then Earl and Tim are bringing out the fact of what their butter is doing to the landscape. As right. far as a business running, he is signed up um, through the state for the business using that address. I have a business at my address. And uh, th that's fine. I mean, do you... Did you uh, go to the um, nope. to the ZBA to get a uh, no need. a home business? Didn't need to. You're not conducting business at with my, your home, I'm not, like yeah, through your home. I'm not conducting business not at my address. You're going to your house. Right. It's just it's paperwork. Kind of the it's in the I desk heard. in the computer. Yeah. Okay. And so we're and I in understand history. what you're saying with the with the truck. We have a lot of people with semi rigs that park their rigs at their homes, and I know that this is an area like what you guys are talking about has so many different facets to it. Um, I'm still kind of hung up on that you had found things that had stated violations because yeah. when we had it looked at more recently, we were told that there was no excavation violation because he's not moving the fill off site. Yes, the like the height is dangerous, but there's nothing to say that he has to put a fence up. And then also that there's nothing to say that well, the town law. But what about state law? And then also as as far as the runoff and Furnace Brook is concerned, that he was in compliance with uh, DES and that he had already had. DES on his own accord come out to tell him what he could or couldn't do. Right. That was the last things that I had known about this whole scenario. You know, a whole another year. I'm sure with the rains yesterday, you know, you know, some fill and things got down into Furnace Brook, and I did notice that he's going quite a bit further back into the hillside, and that he's, that he's, encro he's, encro well, he's encroaching on my property. I can show you where there's a pin in the ground showing where the boundary is, and he's got his dirt there. Is he within 20 feet? Huh? Is he within 20 feet? He was right on the point, right on the pin. If he's within 20 feet, or 50 feet. Well, that's why I, I can't if understand. He's within that, 50 that feet is, is, somebody, uh, is, somebody that is a code violation, so yeah. you need to make a complaint with the code enforcement officer. Well, who are these people that have come out to look? Did they look at that? Maybe they didn't. Well, who made a formal complaint other than Jim well, saying he was running a business? You have to make a complaint with well, the code enforcement. Well, we, 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 how that, Debbie, we, we had sent Rick out there at I least know. twice I know. to look at it, like two I know. consecutive years. And Jim Schultz before that. Okay, not familiar with that, but that's 
so now um, that there's been more significant excavation done and it sounds like it's getting <laughs> closer to Furnace Brook and whatever his activities are over there um, warrants another look and this isn't stopping you from going to ZBA because by all means like go to the ZBA but we could still have um, our code, like code enforcement go back out and see if the conditions have changed in such a way where he's not with in compliance anymore. And this has been around a while, this, this particular issue. Right. Yeah. But if he's within, and I think, and I'm doing this from memory, but if he's within 50 feet of a property line doing an excavation just to 20. move Phil out, yeah. Yeah, I okay. think it's 20, guess but, what? Yeah, it's 20 feet, yeah. Is but if he's within, yeah. yeah, if he's within 50 feet of a wetland or a furnace brook. No, but there's a state law on excavations for our gravel pits, and this might be treated that way. I think it's 50 I, feet. I don't know that if he's, uh, from anything but I've read, up against I the don't know that he has. He's yeah. water anyway. Right. Yeah, I don't yeah. know that he's actually shipping sand or gravel out of there. Yeah, he does it, probably does it at night. Because because he does, he hasn't as far as I can tell so far though I haven't looked deep enough into it his, um, he doesn't have no, no, a business I, license for for uh, whatever he for did, gravel he down, yeah. he's got a just for trucking to go down to 50 feet. I don't know what he's doing he I asked him what he was going to if he's we not, so if if, the, if, if we if could, we'll, we'll yeah. talk that yeah. later. But so we, from our end. I apologize that you never received a formal response uh, to your complaint, and we'll look to correct that, as Jason you know, stated. Um, and we will send our code enforcement officer back out this year, because um, this is a formal complaint in my eyes. Like they took their time to come in. Yeah. Um, will he talk to me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Send him out. Will he talk to me? Or yeah. do I have to? Uh, you know, try to chase him down. No, no, we can have him uh, contact a Roland Tim Somro. I'll show you the place. The and then look from their like from their properties. Yeah. So, um, you know, I guess I know the gentleman had worked with Rick before, but mm -hmm. I do know that he wasn't too thrilled to have him there. So, mm -hmm. um, but he did allow him on the property. Right. But mm -hmm. this way, he can get a full picture to understand what your concerns are. Um, and if he needs to look into what the state regulations are instead of just the town ordinances, then he can do that. I mean, we had a, we had a problem across the street. Go right yeah, I, Jim, that's a whole other issue. And that's a hard, that's a build like a business that's, that's building a building and, that's being worked on and it's yeah. being taken care of yeah okay and that and it's a whole different scenario yeah. than that one the nastiest thing so i can have to do is get involved in zoning i know that you can't win you're going to make somebody angry and you're going to make somebody happy or you're going to make nobody happy but you'll definitely get somebody angry yeah. if you have to do zoning <laughs> enforcement well uh, yeah and, at the end and of the I, day, understand, I understand that but i i do think that if, if a person's going to run a business and physically put equipment and put stuff there and everything else and it's going to look like a business, then they need to go through the procedure. Earl lives with it. I don't. Okay. I go buy it. Okay. I may be annoyed when I oh, see and it. And I lived with it for a couple of years too. And he does. Yeah. Like he operates late. There is a noise yeah. ordinance. Well, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Usually would stop at 10, but sometimes it would go till 11. <laughs> But, I mean, but no, you don't and then he has know. some refrigeration units, I think, on some of the trailers that will run through the night. So, yeah. On on a, the same vein, you were in here a few weeks ago, maybe it was months ago, uh, and there was three properties that you talked about. I took a ride with you. We right. have not we have not followed up on that one either, and this, well, this is very is, much coming to my mind this is, now. This, so is, I this, have, is, this is part of that, but this so, this is different. No, I understand. These <clears throat> are just residents. Um, it was Fox Farm Road, Going Road, and there was one other one you said was on Green, Green Road. Road. Yeah, two hundred eight. 
in Greenville Road. So okay. I'm just I'm there's, just there's asking. There's actually there's actually two. I'm going for. Okay. So I just wanted my memory refreshed, and it's something that we as a one of the ones have one of the ones on Going Road sense. came up through the assessors when somebody moved the second mobile home onto the property with no permit. Yep. But then I was prefer to, to talk about it now in public session. Um, Earl, I just need to get your phone number so Gary can contact you when he's going phone out number? there. Phone we're on you don't we're on camera though, so you don't yeah. wanna say it out loud unless you want the whole town calling we're on you. Camera? Yeah. You Smile. <laughs> okay, I'll give it to you later. Okay. You want to write it out a piece of paper give you. Uh, I don't want to write it out. Uh, <coughs> I, got a, I got a small one. Yeah, that's all right. I'll leave it with it. Okay. Well, thank you for taking the time to entertain us. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're here for, to entertain. Yeah. Do so you have any, any interest on, on some of the things I've seen with veteran assessments and failed subdivisions in other communities? In, in New Hampshire, I'd be happy to get together with somebody and tell them how they were handled. I'm just curious, do they opt, do they work like a lien? So if, if we did a betterment tax, <coughs> this, this is a betterment assessment, meeting, right? and yes. now one of these people sell their house before they paid that stupid. off, is that something that becomes it's a tax? It's, it's, it's collected with taxes. The betterment assessment goes on the tax bill. And it gets, it gets paid for X number No matter years. who owns it. No matter who okay. owns it. Until, it's, until it's taken care of. And yeah. I, I, the, the one that was biggest that I got involved with actually went to town meeting. And it was a warrant article to take over the road and to build a road and how the betterment assessment would work. So the whole public saw the whole, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then money didn't come out of it. Article five or six or six or seven or whatever the road articles are. Yeah, and it, it was a, it's a specific appropriation, and it passed overwhelmingly. So it was a separate one article was then created, put on the on the ballot for people to look at. It, it, it basically it. said the selectmen <laughs> want to finish the road; they want the town to take it over, and bingo, okay, it passed. But it also put down how it was being paid for with the better right. assessment. Yep. The veteran assessment paid for 100% of what needed to be done. The base was already there. But the thing about the road was it connected two other roads. Half of it got done, and one half never got done. Yeah. And so I can I, I even probably dig, no, dig, dig up what, how the article was written and everything else. I know a guy wrote the article. Yeah. But it, it worked very good. And it, the selectmen wanted it done, but they didn't want to be playing favorites. Yeah. You know, because you got, you know, you, you, you do one place and then you got another one, okay, you know. You, well, you got a bunch of loose heads hanging around. That's why we want to try to figure out a, a template to use, because there are a few around town, so. Yeah, but, but, but do, doing it, I mean, you don't want to do it if the developer's capable of finishing the road. Correct. We would never offer it to a, See, well, a yeah. subdivision that's under construction. No way. Yeah, but what happened on this on this particular road? First of all, the people that were on the part that was done didn't weren't involved at all. So it was only the half that wasn't done. Mm -hmm. But uh, it worked real well, yeah. and the people were happy with it. And it uh, we put we put we we took it. We put all the lots together and we revoked the subdivision. And then the guy the guy that wouldn't work wouldn't work with us was a lawyer from Cape Cod. He uh, he had to pay his share. Yeah. Or we'd come take the property. Yeah. And then sell it off back as we, then we resubdivided <laughs> and sell it off back as lots. So we, we you know the guy thought he was gonna get cute with us. Yeah, yeah. It didn't work out. <laughs> Okay, I'll see you. All right, thank you. Go. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, Good night. 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 Good
They're playing. Okay. And thank you for your time. And uh, is that else sunglasses or something down there on the floor? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's why I have a dozen of them. I <laughs> think I will find two at a time. <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys. Good night, Jim. Bye, Jim. Bye. Thank you. Is she going to be in tomorrow? She will not be in tomorrow. No. Okay, so just if you need anything, just call me. Okay. But Thank text, you. text me for, because that's how I, I get that quicker. Okay. I go into my town email once a day. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, I, I just I looked through her email today to see if I needed to forward anything and. There was, was nothing. there anything there? No. Okay. No. All right. I do have something I want to talk to you about when we get into budgets. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to have the budget for the labor in there and the planning board in your budget. I'd rather have it in each one of the budgets so we know what we're spending. I love that idea. Yeah. <laughs> it is a good yeah. And then when it's 1230 at night and she runs out of hours. She can leave the planning board meeting and come in the next day and take care. Yeah, that's good. So anyway, good see night, you. Night. Thank you. Having similar thoughts of allocations of time mm -hmm. for the different roles, because um, if you know planning board's taking up a lot of her time, then she's not. I'd say like eighty-five percent. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. At least. Yep. Yeah. With <coughs> and then as well. Um, having each board or committee that is of a certain stature, like the planning board or the CBA, to actually hold their own legal budget so that they yes. oversee that. Because right now, they're, it's all being fed out of the select board's legal budget. It's divvied up. Yeah. Like, we're keeping track of how much the planning board Good. is spending, so how much the sense. zoning board is spending. But it's, it's just all under legal. So it's BOS legal. And if that was <coughs> the true uh, way that it was working, then we would we should be authorizing every legal consulting that they do exactly. if it's under our right, exactly, and that's where right. and that's what was in place before yeah. was they would have to get that prior authorization, yeah, to uh, like call. just to make a phone call, and often it was no. Right. But then you're hampering a there. border committee, like. So then the select board has ultimate authority over everybody and can really hamstring yeah. the different mm -hmm. boards. And one of the reasons I didn't want that to be that way anymore, I right. wanted like, each board and committee to be able to operate and make decisions that they felt that they needed to make. And um, you know, they shouldn't have to you know, call mom first to, like, to right. see if, cause if they need to consult a, a lawyer. Well, then, we all. Yeah. Call mom first, as in the legislative body, and I think yeah. that's where this would be good: is that the people can see. Yep. Mm -hmm. What's that's the mom. Well, I know that's the yeah. mom. But yeah. The mom before yeah. was no. Uh, I get it, yeah. and I don't. And I think I agree with you. I don't think that we should. Because I don't think we have our nose in every elected boards. Yeah, and so yeah, oh, that's not right. I don't think you need to talk to them about that. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you know, like it's, I don't know. But yeah, so it's just sort of treating them like adults and allowing them to oversee their true budgets because there's so many things that the BOS budget just covers yep. blanket for all these different things. Exactly. And that's why all these different, like the different boards and committees, their budgets are three, five lines because yeah. they all feed off of that yeah. BOS budget mm -hmm. and it's incalculable. For, it's so hard for us to grasp like what's going to go on so then it does beg the question I've, I've, I've come to see maybe there's a reason it's this way mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. we'll find out if we try to poke a stick in the bee's nest right <laughs> which bee's nest no I'm just saying if we're going to make a change it, yeah. might, it might be poking a stick in there and we might find out quickly like no you don't want to do that because of such and such and well, I actually did get some interesting pushback um, like I ran it by one um, chairperson and I don't know if it was just the lateness of the hour or what but there was some pushback to that legal budget division um, scenario uh, but yeah, definitely worth having a follow up conversation just to 
I think it'd be better to have each committee and board's um, true budgets known, mm -hmm. you know, and not yeah. just all looked at as the select boards. Yeah. And ex expenses. Yeah, and then even just like the employee breakdowns and of their different roles in the different areas, like those should be allocated by that board and committee. Because, yeah. Yeah, you know, we come up with that 35 hour time frame, but then their service to support whatever boards that they're serving, you know, as a part of that whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not just their normal work day. Yeah, couldn't, when it comes to legal services, uh, couldn't you still keep the money under uh, the BOS and have sub departments? Is that what you the, said? With you're each doing one now? of the uh, thing? Which is, in my mind, that's at least a good start. If they're. You but know, that's what's happening now, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so that's right. a good And is it manageable for you? Pretty easy. It's manageable. They just don't see it when they're. When they get their monthly budget printout, they don't see how much you know that they've spent six thousand dollars so far this year in legal costs. And, that get, and on that printout, that because it's not under planning, it's mm -hmm. under it's only it's not even under BOS, it's under legal. Mm -hmm. It's there's three categories under legal. Okay, so th there's no way that you can um, uh, mirror that over to to uh, their printout. I can just. Do another printout and give it to them. It's separate. I can't add it onto this. Okay. Yeah. It's not technically a line item under it. When you run this, yeah, it's a whole thing. <laughs> I'm not even going to get it's into it because it's not worth it. Your favorite bookkeeping software. Yes. Speaking of accounting, um, are we start going to start getting the uh, new accounting software this fall? Uh, hopefully by the end of the year. Sending out the paperwork that I've got and um, uh, what I've done so far on it. Um, should I send it to you and you distribute it to them, or can I just send it to everybody? Are we talking about Turnpike Road? Yeah. Um, as long as you don't comment on it. I mean. I think it's the same difference because even like with the blind copying, it's technically. If we're each individually responding, even though we don't know what each other is responding, there's still some no, element of yeah. No, the le legal. And I, we're only really talking about timing, but I'm just saying yeah. we have to be careful with all this stuff because it's we can't get into any type of decision stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. No. This is so just blind copying. Nobody sees any. I'm the only one who sees everybody's response. You guys don't see anything. Right. Yeah. So that's what the attorneys recommend doing. If you're sending something to a board, you blind copy, because then that way, when someone responds, the other, the other people that you sent it to don't see that. So that does not constitute a quorum. Oh, that's good. It's when you, it's when you start responding to emails. Yeah. That you know, and you're making, you know, talking about towns. Like if I if I wanted to send you guys an email saying, hey, we're having a cookout. That yeah. wouldn't have to blind copy because it's not town related, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's I not get like it all. It's just like that, uh, it's almost like a sealed ballot scenario. Yeah. And we were just talking about timing on a legal call tomorrow, but right. at the same point as like, huh. Right. It just seems kind of funny because you're still getting, like, you're seeing all the answers. Yeah. Like, of whether or not people can make it. Right. And then, too much jibber jabber over nothing really. Oh, yeah. It was like, I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there. Yeah. It was like, cool, cool. No, I, mean, I sent out the invite. It funny. I will send everybody a copy of the paperwork I've got. Yeah. There's no comments on it or anything. It's, yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, and that's not making decisions. That's, that's correct. correct. Providing information, yeah. which yeah. is helpful. Is that air conditioner running? Yep, yeah, isn't that great? Does it in all our offices too, right above our heads. Is there a warranty on it? You're not supposed to do that, are we? That's supposed to be quiet. Very quiet. Is the, um, the 
mini split like right outside the window or something? They're, it's they're in right every there. single office. There's so a loose uh, panel on there vibrating. That's what it sounds like to me. But yeah. every single one of them do it. Do we have a warranty on them? Uh, I think it's too late for that because now it's been two years. Oh. And um, we said it about it. Uh, we called them, I guess, I guess I, I think Scott called them about it. And they said, it's fine. <laughs> That's what they did. That's fine. Yeah. The warranty response. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about yeah, it. Here, take it's that yeah, here's some earplugs. Yeah. Um, all right. So, okay. what I had officially on uh, the agenda was the review of uh, the letter that you had written <coughs> oh, yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, Debbie had made mention that she had received no comments. Like, did no, you make any uh, edits or anything like that on it yet, Luke? No. No? Did you want to have any further input on the letter? Uh, which letter are we talking about? The one to our governor, Sununu. Oh. So um, I was under the understanding that you guys were all going to make comments, edits, changes, whatever, send them to me so I could send them to Jason by last so Friday. Okay. And, but I got nothing, so... Yeah, it, it, and so that's because we I well, I thought we were just going to to we well, did one put yeah, something there's together. A, there's just two. However, that is well read. I have I have a different take on, two, what? on the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, you're not gonna like it. The thing is that we represent the people of this town, and. By doing this letter, we're giving the um, um, we're showing one coordinated thing from three of us that's supposed to represent the town, but the town didn't ask us to do it. So we're, t we're trying to send this letter speaking for the town, but we really don't know what the town wants or the townspeople want. So my thought is that, uh, and I've already sent mine out, is that um, a letter goes out specifically from each of us and we can let the townspeople know and, and encourage them to send a letter also. But an impact from, let's say that we only got 10% of the town um, who would write a letter and he would get 503 letters versus one letter from three of us without any other thing, which, which would have more impact on him. I would say a, a letter from with the letterhead. I disagree with you. Well, I speak from experience from writing to senators, representatives, and what they do typically in them cases is send me a rubber stamped response, almost an auto reply. That's right. I'm thinking this may have a different response. I do appreciate your um, point of the people didn't ask us to do this. No, they didn't. No. And that's the part that bothers me. We represent the people. So could we the letter... Are, we are responsible for the fiduciary aspects of what goes on in this town. More than that. But... Would, would We're responsible for more than fiduciary. Well, that, that's a primary responsibility. But you're, did you you're right. did you you're when when you became selectman? Did you take an oath? Yes, I did, and that was for you know my personal um, uh, responsibilities to the town and Uphold and the, the government and and the United States, the Constitution, etc. The Constitution. Okay, and, and however. So that, I go back to the original argument that I am representing the people in this town and they have not asked me to do this. 
-hmm. How far do you go with that? Would you say that the I'm, people of I'm this saying town, that, you know, I'm not going to, to do it at the town level with a stamp or anything because that is my take. Now, what if However, it was? However, if you what if it want was, to send it, what if that, that's certainly your. What if it was record. edited to read in such a way that captures that? If it's going on a letterhead, mm -hmm. it's it's representing the town, and we've got what in, five thousand two. We've got five thousand two hundred people here. But it's not representing the town. It's representing one facet of the town because the planning board does not represent the town yet they use our letterhead all the time they're not representing the whole town they're representing the planning board whenever they, they were do representing that. the planning board but that's because the planning board ends up working for but i use that the as town an example. the town government we have the same thing with all of the departments and committees they're not necessarily that they've been asked to do right. in our every statement that's made is a full representation of all the people in town. That's not necessarily how it is. And and with this, it could be very easily modified to include that what you're saying. It is the view of this select of board. this select board. And and even include we have not been however you want to say it, instructed by constituents um, vote or hearing to do this, but take it upon ourselves just as a matter of looking at the oath that we made. Um, and as a fellow... My letter has already gone out. As a fellow public servant. Yeah, and that's great. I think... The people who came here to tell us what took place at that meeting said they sent, I don't know, 400 letters out. What did they tell us? What was the result of that? Can you, do you recall? No. Do you recall them saying that there was any positive outcome from them sending? There was no, there were, I do remember saying that they did not receive any response. Yeah. And that's the thing well, with the individuals one writing. Response. Well, well they basically had, just. Yeah, there was, a, there was a few responses. Yeah. Some said that's terrible. Um, and then one said you deserve it. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was the responses that, that they got. And this is where I'm, my intent with this is um, we're public servants. Mm hmm so is the governor. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the, and that was put into my letter where mm -hmm. I basically chastised him for his behavior because he you know if he was chairing a board and um, you know that discussion and he had the people around him um, on, on their cell phone, tapping in, message, just doing messages. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's obvious that um, they weren't paying attention to what they should be paying attention to. And it was my observation by watching that, that um, he seemed to be uh, typing in to inform the, uh, um, the st law enforcement officers to select certain individuals from the crowd and to, to uh, take them out, but to remove them from the room. And because I could see no other reason, he, he wasn't paying attention to the meeting. He was just doing his little I thing. I want to well, I want to like shift yeah. it off onto that because we all agree on that point, but the sticking point to you is that it was going to go out on town letterhead mm -hmm. and have all three of our signatures on it. Mm -hmm. And you felt that it was best to individually? Correct. Interesting. Because 
you know, I'm pretty sure that it, it may reflect the um, if the if the people of the town actually even know about it, it, it would reflect. Well, yeah. the full community doesn't have to be aware of something in order to, you know, take issue with something that happened to one or five or ten. You know, like we don't need the full community in an uproar over something in order to act. This is taking a, like a more, you know, we're like, um, reacting to something now like instead of being like if we would have acted sooner it would have been nicer I wasn't quite aware of the full gravity of the situation that took place Either but I don't see any sure. problem with us calling question to it because it was highly concerning then have at it I'm just putting out my point of view yeah and I think the only the only possibility of Real criticism would be like a partisan thing, but I, I feel this is far beyond partisanship. It has nothing to do with partisanship. Um, it's constitutional right, and I saw, <laughs> I think it was, I'm not sure when he had it, one of the leading Democrat um, candidates for 2024, RFK. And he's, he's a Democrat, and I'm a Republican. But what he said was in that letter. He said the last three years, this country has suffered the worst attack on the Constitution mm -hmm. in the history of the country. This is from a Democrat. This is what a lot of Republicans are saying. This is from a Democrat. This is no longer partisan. This is constitutional and without it without these rights in the Constitution I mean you think there's division now if we let these things slide away there will be no country it's that's where I, that's where I, mm -hmm. I feel like as public servants we have an obligation to speak up and say we actually like the rights of our people to be observed. And, and I, I see it as in a different light of that I am representing the people of this town um, through that letter and that I don't really know what they think or what they would do. Mm. So would you say that you're representing the majority of the people of this town or because I mean, nobody can represent all the people. No, but so is but, that what your goal is? Is to represent the majority? The, yeah, and if the majority don't even know anything about this, um, there's no argument there, is there? Well, I'm, I'm hmm. gonna say the majority of the people in town don't know much of what goes on in here because a lot of people don't watch. Them. Clearly, you know, a lot of people come to our meetings. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But. And it could be because, like, when I was, before I worked here, I was leaving my house at 5 a.m. and not getting home till 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night. So I couldn't, I had no time to do anything. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have that issue or they have kids or, you know, so, like, they, a lot of people, I feel, don't even know what goes on in here. That's true. But you know? can you then say that, you're taking, I don't see the position that I'm in as being a political position. That's All right. And what this whole thing um, going in about, you know, what happened here, it being, you know, against the Constitution and everything else, I agree with it, but it's a political, political, political thing. I'm not in this position for the politics. I'm in this position to try to do the best job that I can for, this, for the town. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. as an elected official, whether you like it or not, you are in the politics. That yeah. is just, but, but do, we, do we play politics in this room? 
it's not about playing politics. It's so, it's it's what we're doing. But we're not playing. We're, uh, but this we're is not, politics. We're not we're not being political here. We can agree, we can disagree, but we're not being political. All right, we're doing something about budgeting. We're doing something about running this town. We're doing things about hiring, firing people. Uh, we're trying to make sure that our police department has all the equipment, and same with the DPW and everybody else, have all the equipment that they need to do their jobs. All of them are political, little. No, they're not. Have you ever those, heard of defund those, the police? Those are. We're not talking about defunding. That's oh, a but some people that, are. But and, we come, and we come out and we say, no, actually, we are going to fund the police. You're we made a political you're decision. decision all right? Okay. You may consider that political because you changed the subject into defund the police. I was talking about providing our police department and DPW and everybody else who works uh, for the town mm -hmm. with the necessary tools and equipment to do their job properly. Right? There's nothing political about that. Well, and so if I may, the political aspect to that is that there are some in town that the, that believe that this town office has no, shouldn't even be here. There should be no highway guys, there should be no police, no fire, and then the other end of the spectrum is full services. There are people that want even more and to have their taxes doubled, they'd be fine with it, um, to have a um, more enhanced police department, have a brand new $30 million safety complex and all of the brand new equipment and have everything shiny brand new. So just with that element of at what level do we fund things or like to find that perfect medium, it's political. Like in order to get support for our budget last year, I was politicking. I would hope that you were politicking because you believed in the budget. You would, like, all of us would be engaging in a certain level of politics in order to gain support for, so, like, our vision for what the town should be. And it comes from experience, like, with the different departments, seeing what's going on, relaying that back to our constituents, the people that we speak to in the community. It's all of its politics. It is like I would just. But I understand what you're saying too, where you don't want to go to that next, that personal level, like the personal aspect of it. But it is politicking. All of it's politicking. It's something that I had to rationalize with, but it just, it is so what it is. I, I, I yeah. said the same thing. Someone's like, well, you're a politician now. And I was like, what? I mean, that just, I said, absolutely not. I'm a selectman, I'm not no. a politician. No. But it's it's not left or right, Democrat or Republican. Not on this it, particular it's, it's issue. On on and on any of this in this room, mm. with you guys, it it's just politicking and it's not a division. It's, it's not a oh, it's not yeah. which side of the fence you're on type of politics. Oh, no, it's no, just no, no, in no. general and talking to people, going out there. We believe in this budget. Please vote for it. And That's right. This and is why that type of politicking. And I do not consider consider that politicking. I consider that when I'm trying to sell the budget, which I did, that I was educating the people as to well, why yeah. the budget was. That wasn't right. politics. Well, so it is. So uh, one of the definitions is for politic is characterized by shrewdness in managing, contriving, or dealing, uh, promoting a policy, being shrewd or tactful. Like this is like, it's, it is what it is. And it, it, it wasn't what I thought it was either. Like someone says, yeah, politicking. Someone even mentioned it before they were even on a board or anything. I'm out politicking. Because you can do it not being an elected official. You can still right. be out politicking, right. you know, which is basically sharing that ideas and pushing. Salesmen them. are politics. Uh, but, okay. <laughs> you know? Yes, yeah. that's one definition, but there are multiple. Then you yeah. have to say there are multiple definitions, and which one that you're using when you're saying that, um, you know, we of the select board uh, out of this town are doing something. That's getting political. Without, my simple thing is, how many people did you talk to um, that 
saying that you were going to say this in the letter to that believe in the Constitution. Um, yeah, sorry. And then, and then just they came back to you and said, uh, "Yeah, that's the good. That's the way to go." So that that brings up an interesting thing, and I, and I don't know if I could give you a number. I talked to, I'll say a handful, maybe two handfuls. They were very happy with it, mm -hmm. but it does bring up an interesting aspect to the politicking. When you were elected, why do you think people elected? Is it when we when we are elected? Is it because people have some understanding of what our politics are and would like us to implement that form, that base into the decisions made in the town? I would I would like to think that's the number one reason someone votes for someone. I've been told you can't bring your personal beliefs to the table. Um, and if that's true, then I, can't, I shouldn't be here. I feel like I you have, have to, to bring it's my personal beliefs because that's who they elected me. And, and then if I neglect my personal beliefs to try and satisfy some imagined or small group of people, um, I have. Let down the people who voted for me. I, I, I agree with you, and I have a lot of respect for both of you for what you're doing. All right, but I'm looking at it from my point of view, which is why you know why did I I win? I didn't win by a whole hell of a lot. For one, it was like forty votes, and two, um, my competitor was somebody who was very proud of being from Massachusetts. And being a lawyer, and, um, and and I think that did more to reduce the number of votes that he got than anything else, because people in this town, from my belief, um, have less respect for somebody coming from Massachusetts than they do for somebody who's been living here for a while. What is that? Kind of draw that into because most this discussion. People, I was going to say because most people from Massachusetts are liberal. Not all. And mm -hmm. No. I've met no, quite no, a few no, a lot of people in town who are yeah. civic. Like, yeah. I'm asking if that's why he was saying that. Because this town is very conservative. Yes, it is. <clears throat> kind of but, a So is that why you were saying well, that's we, why you said? That's the Massachusetts thing, or? Um, well, it happened to be that the guy who ran against me was from Massachusetts. Oh, I know. Yeah, I mean, he'd only been here for six months. Right. So, um, you know, it, I, that was my belief, is that I wanted simply because I was more attuned to the people of the town. Because you've been here a lot longer. Yeah. Not so necessarily. I guess, I'm trying to think of, like, how to... not doing this for the votes for the next election but for the votes of the last election to the points that Jason had made that we were put here with certain like with an understanding of certain beliefs um, behind us and for too long I feel that those voices haven't been loud enough um, To represent my feelings, our feelings, or the feelings of, of the people that were on the board, and there's a lot of silence and kind of not an encouragement, to like to, to make those steps forward. And I did speak to a handful of people about this letter specifically, and I didn't ask anybody that I didn't know, so that's kind of difficult. You know, it was just it was trusted people around me, um, and that's why I just had the couple simple edits. <laughs> just to kind of take a little bit of the 
the extra jab out of it. Um, there was no extra jabs. <laughs> um, but in a lot of positive feedback no this is great this is excellent um, too many of our leaders you know you know sit silent um, and not voicing um, their opinions and speaking out on behalf of their community I mean because this was something that actually impacted uh, a fellow townsperson uh, and they're still dealing with it today. And if for nothing else, we get a little bit more insight on what, why that decision was made um, to you know, arrest them at that rally and then now to hold judgment until I'm guessing uh, the governor is either, you know, like not running again. Like if he runs for another term, then are they gonna still withhold judgment on them, like, and not give them a trial, Speedy so that they could never go to another rally and just simply sit in a chair or stand up against the wall? You know, like, I don't. It was egregious. Um, You're right, and one of the, the statements that I made in my letter was that um, that he should be ashamed of himself, and that what he owes those people that are being held back from um, from pursuing their constitutional rights um, is that he pardon to be a, 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 um, a flat pardon to every one of them that uh, was arrested. Did you sign it as selectman? Did I sign it as selectman? No. Because that was, I didn't want to stop you guys from doing it. I'm just telling you why I did want to be part of that. Yeah. No, I can respect that. Yeah, because I know this is a little bit stronger, but the whole region, reason that we're engaging with our state reps is mm -hmm. to have our voices heard yeah. at that level. And then there's nothing stopping us from directly engaging, you know, with the top tiers of our state government or, you know, just trying to push that um, narrative. I, I didn't want to put it in something that made me feel like this was something that was coming from the majority of the people that I represent. Yeah, my gut tells me it is, uh, but that's just my That's your gut. gut. Yeah, it, I agree. Yeah, oh. it's just my gut. I, I, I am not sure it is or it isn't, mm -hmm. but I was not going to speak for them. Yeah. And I think it would be a um, very legitimate thing to add that this is not being done under the direction of the town body. This is being done as a matter of conscience or however it would be. And, and yeah. that's fine. No, I, then and I'm not saying this to try to convince you. Then don't put it on the letterhead. No, and then put it on the letterhead. No, I would say then don't put but it you, on the letterhead. Well, I mean, you don't have to sign it. And I've already, like I said, I've already sent my letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, no. you two can do whatever you want. <laughs> well, no, we can't. I'm sure you can. Well, maybe some. And just remember, you yes. know, the, the, when, when you said that you turned to people around you to see how they felt about it. Mm -hmm. Well, those are people that are within your little sphere. They're not the 5,242 people left here in this town that, um, that you represent. If I went knocking door to door, if, like for every single person. What if? It wouldn't have, like, it, no decisions would ever be made if we had to do that for everything that we talked about, and decided about, and that's why we represent the people that show up at the polls um, and vote for us. Mm -hmm. And the people that I chose to bounce that off of are people that are not afraid to tell me that I'm wrong, you know, or something's not right. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why I choose them as people that I speak to in confidence. That's fine. That's your decision to well, you need. I believe everybody should have advisors to some degree. In my, yeah, in my case, 
I don't know as many people as either one of you. And um, because during most of the time that I was living here, I was gone 80% of the time. But you know some people. I do know some people. Did you ask? And I've spoken to them. What did they think? And um, it, it turns out that my neighbors from uh, that just moved in uh, a couple of months ago are from California. Does that speak for itself? Mm -hmm. Not really. No. There's some California <laughs> people that I've met that are into no, town. No, no, they're very liberal. Well. I mean, first light, uh, first words out of their mouth is, I don't believe in property lines. So that kind of set, set me up. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. But in any it, case, um, to the to your editing, and I knew that would become an issue. I tried to have it as formal as possible, and the actual. See what that is. So there's three states left in the country, who say if you're addressing a governor, you will call him Your Excellency. We happen to be one of them states. So it wasn't a sarcastic. No. No, it's a, that's how it is. Yeah. That's the formal way to address it. When he gets in introduced into a room, His Excellency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? It's mm -hmm. true. Wow. So and it I can have... be taken the way that <laughs> you took it, <laughs> but it wasn't the, I'll say, full intention. <laughs> using that. Yeah. You it just happened to work out nicely. <laughs> well, it does sound know. very sarcastic. It, it, sound, it can take the tone of sarcasm, but at the same time, if you don't address in the formal way, then it's not. It's formal. disrespective. It's not a disrespectful. Letter, so it's kind of a either win win or lose lose, however you right. want to look at it. But it is the. All right. So you call that. him your excellency and then sit there and chastise him for the rest but of the time. I don't feel like this is a real personal attack on the governor. I okay. don't. I think it's a procedural attack. It's calling to question the procedures. But I'm not, not only the I'm not stopping you guys from, right. from doing it. But you can still um, <clears throat> offer consultation to us. I did. And I'm about to ask for more. Okay. <laughs> Do you believe that the state troopers should be held to account? Or are they okay with just following? Is it okay for us, whether it's state troopers, with our own police department? Um, is there a point when they should say, I'm sorry, I can't do It would cost them their job. Yeah, mm -hmm. oftentimes doing the right thing is painful. Yeah. But do you think but that there it, is a... It, but it's one of those that um, I would imagine most of them have a family to, to support. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to look at state troopers and other police people as very similar to a military organization. There's a person who actually gives the orders and everybody else follows it. Mm -hmm. Because there was um, um, because you take for granted that that person knows more about the situation that you're about to be put in than you do. You're saying like a, a police officer? With, I'm talking about military because I'm using the military uh, okay. scenario. You know that you could be a colonel, and a general tells you to do this, and you think it's wrong, but you have to do it anyway. How did that hold up in Nuremberg? Um, well, that was it. Did hold up uh, well at all? <laughs> you know? I didn't think so. But uh, that was, yeah, and to me that was wrong. What was? That they were holding those people up and, um, um, and hanging them 
uh, giving them an instant death sentence for things that they really had no control over. Even to this day, when they find that there was a secretary that was working at, um, uh, at one of the concentration camps, um, they're considered guilty, even though they were just doing mm. Debbie's job or even something lesser. Yeah. So. And this is, you know, what, 60 years later? Yeah, so, but, but the larger question, you don't feel, you don't feel like an, a law enforcement officer has an obligation to look out for the basic. I'm not going to ask them all to be constitutional scholars, but the basic fundamental Bill of Rights. So if, if we order our chief to go and compensate guns from somebody, he has no obligation to tell us, I can't do that. That's against the Constitution. And he, he would just, and he, can, and he, he should follow that. the orders and do it. And, and no, he won't. Well, he probably wouldn't. No, he, he really wouldn't. But, but why? But why is it okay to disobey something like that? Um, because it, it, it's being held contrary to a higher standard. That's what my point is. Okay. And that higher standard being a written law. And or so Bill of if, Rights. So I'm if not sure if that's the law. It's a, it's a written law. <clears throat> so what you saw on that video. It's Actually, it's not a law. It's a right. It's actually okay. a God-given right. It's a God-given right. That the government has That's no correct. Right. So what you saw in that video, um, what did you... Oh, it angered me. So, but it would be... It, would, it seems like... <clears throat> The helplessness that I heard from them people, because who can they turn to now? Who's going to protect thing. them and their rights when? I mean, you don't, you, you can't ask law enforcement to it. If, if law enforcement's boss is the one doing it, so where do people get to turn? for the protection of their rights. Okay, we've gone off on tangents here. And okay. we're in right now, and it's a good and one, I, hear, I think. I hear Ron yelling. Oh, come on. You hear what? <laughs> Ron. No, but come I think on. it's an important discussion because so much of it, I mean, we saw up north in Canada. Did you ever see any videos of how that trucker protest went? Oh, yeah. Did well, you I see the people saying, the come on, we're your neighbors, and the police just... Right, humbling them, and that and that was. They the had jobs. And they their couldn't premier, disobey. Yeah, and their premier is the, is the one who was forcing that. So this is because I do it. I I question it in here, and I wonder: is that a bad thing to question? Is it putting too much responsibility on the newly hired police officer across the road? That. This is part of the deal when you're a law enforcement officer, that you're here to protect and serve, not the government, the people, right? Is that asking too much? Or is that outside of the, am I, am I being off the rails here? I'm not, you know, you are you. Right, and I'm I, saying and philosophically. I, and, I, and I am me. Okay, and you can believe what you want to believe, and I will believe what I want to believe. And I'm not going to change my mind. And I don't want you to change your mind. We can sit here and we can have an intelligent conversation about it. Yeah, that's okay. But I'm that trying. doesn't mean, no, you're still trying to change me. Well, I'm sorry to okay. take it that way, but yeah. I'm just saying what, how I believe. Yeah, and yeah, I know, but you're still, you're still pushing. Each time. It might be part of my nature. It's called politicking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, with that, move on. Debbie. Looks like that was it.
Do you have any updates for anything? No. No? I did, but I can't remember what they were. And um, so to... when's the payroll and all that going to be done? That will be done Monday. We discussed that. Um, okay. I will email you as soon as it's done. Uh, so I won't be on. back until Wednesday. Maybe Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Yeah, to sign. So we won't wait for you then. Okay. Uh, the 18th is the uh, state reps in July. We're almost oh, you're open Monday, aren't you? Well, not. <laughs> yeah. What? No, I know. The state reps. And then the okay. 11th. But I didn't know if there was anything this week that you wanted to update us on. Um, and, like staying within this week and month. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> There's a lot of things, but I can't think of it. Okay, anymore. so no updates? No, I'm good. Jason, did you have anything else to discuss this evening? I wouldn't mind a non-public regarding our legal um, phone conference. Tomorrow? Yeah. yeah, or is it Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. I'd just like to discuss it before we go get on the phone with the lawyer. Okay. Alright. And then... Uh, Tonight, I got a new thing. What is the board's position with people filling up their yards with stuff? Well, that was one of the um, discussions that, um, that Jim was having about uh, exactly. the Greenville Road one. Yep, and as go to on Road on Fox Farms. And he specifically pointed out to me and brought to our attention whatever. Right, I to yeah. And the one, um, you know, there is a, uh, an ordinance on how many unregistered vehicles you can have um, sitting around, uh, rotting, and... Uh, two. Two. So it's, you know, there are guidelines for some of this stuff, mm -hmm. and I think, <coughs> you know, that they should be at least taken into consideration. So, but then if you put one person's stuff and you're considering them under like a certain lens in light of engagement with the community and different things and like what type of things is there versus another person's other stuff that they feel like they want in their yard and maybe they're not as engaged or don't like play a role in any type of like yearly or annual event like how do you weigh it out i guess is where i'm coming it's really yeah because it's almost like if, it's, if there's no pollution you know potential or issues with it um it's just unsightly but some we people, have a zoning but ordinance some people like it. But, but yeah, you know, the, the ordinance states it gives you specific numbers. Of vehicles. Right, of vehicles. So it's like two yeah. unregistered. Yeah. Now, if they had license plates and they were currently registered, it's not an issue, whether they ran or not. Yeah. But I don't think he's just talking about cars. No. And no. this is like more stuff or small engine but stuff. Still, is that what? Yeah, just yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, if, it, if, the, if it's a small engine stuff and they're running a business fixing it, that's a business. <coughs> no, I'm saying collectors. Collectors. <laughs> yeah, that collect random um, items. Stuff. <laughs> and some people just happen to own property where it's, you can see it more. And I'm sure there's other collectors that you just can't see it and it's, it's off the beat and these are a thousand out, times these are outdoor that. type things that yeah can. okay just a stash of junk in there well to them it may not be junk but to a lot of people it would be and there's that's the question that comes is that something that this board should approach the people and talk to them do we have ordinances about that? Um, we have a junkyard permit, but you would That's have to be selling. No, not necessarily. Junkyard. 
Jets. Really? So you, but you'd have to be selling stuff too. So uh, they're not doing that, to my knowledge. So you'd have to get a junkyard permit, and then the vehicle thing. As far as I know, I I don't know of any other ordinance or. So it would really be limited to the vehicle if the board was to take like a yeah, quote unquote legal action. Vehicle. I mean, do you consider a code boat? enforcement action? Yeah. Yeah. Do you consider a boat uh, or four boats in the in the yard um, vehicles unregistered? Or they could be uh, flower planters. Yep. I've seen boats like that. Me yep, too. That's true. I've seen an old truck like At that. At which point that had a fountain up. coming out of the front um, <laughs> grill, and then uh, and it was an old, old like 1940s or 50s pickup truck, yeah. all rusty. Fountain out of the front and flower bed in the back. It was yeah. beautiful. And, and that's artwork. Right. So there you go. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so is duty. <laughs> Do we have a duty? I don't know. I don't know that we do unless there's a specific ordinance and I would be hesitant to to do much about like start going on like encouraging people to like right. start complaining about their neighbor's grass height and like where does it end? Right. And that's not to me that's not what New Hampshire or New Ipswich is about. Um, you, know, I th you know, with the ordinances we have yeah. now, um, yeah, those are actually written. Everything else would be subjective. Well, it doesn't violate anything, so it's a civil matter, technically. You know, homeowners associations don't like it. Right, homeowner associations. Yeah. You know, sometimes have things that says, "Well, your grass has got to be cut every once a week." Or yeah. Two weeks, or well, can't be taller than two inches. You know, yeah. and you have some rainstorms, and all of a sudden, the rye comes up, and it's put to half log before you can get out there <laughs> and do it. Yeah. And you know, you, you you can't get picky on that kind of stuff. Oh, well, I live at home, just with grass. If it was up to me, I'd just let it all go along and cut trails through it because I like butterflies and birds and. Ticks. Taking walks through, I don't care about <laughs> ticks. You know, just kind of seeing all that go on around me. I enjoy it. But mm -hmm. my wife, nice, short, perfect, green, doesn't turn tan or brown. <laughs> Back to yeah. the beholder. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know what it is. Yeah, so it's just. We do half and half in our backyard. So I guess we just have, you know, if there's an ordinance um, governing that, mm -hmm. then. We certainly then have to abide base, by it. Yeah, you have a basis to to complain about it. Mm -hmm. I have no not seen one, but that doesn't mean one doesn't exist somewhere in the abyss. Mm -hmm. I, don't yeah. I I doubt it. I don't think so. It yeah. doesn't seem to have been the nature of the people of this town. No. So, yeah. our position is... If you don't like it, don't look at it. <laughs> oh, the... Um, Except for... What's right? Yeah, vehicles, are we, yeah. Are we in a, a non... We um, are in public session. We're still in public session, okay. All right, well, I guess um, I can talk to the code enforcement officer about these properties that were pointed out to me. Mm -hmm. See what he says. I will do that. You know which ones they are, right? Yes. Okay. I have another one too. But I'll tell you a story. Another <laughs> off credit because it's kind of comical the whole thing because the person caught themselves. And they're like, oh, wait a second. What am I complaining about? Is this coming out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. Uh, yeah, it can happen. Yeah. I was like, yeah. That's what I was, I was sitting there going, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, really? Really? You? All right. But we all do that, like, in different things. Yeah. Get caught up in, you know, when we feel right. like we would like something to be done or, yeah, yeah. That was all I had. All right. So, Lou, anything for? No, I've already 
spoken my piece earlier today. All right, so I got a update from the planning board last week. Uh, Vertex project was approved conditionally. Oh, wow. So oh, that cell tower is gonna be going out. Which? Old Range. It's off of Old Range. Yeah, still on, still on Old Range? Not, nah, it was off. The other plan that was approved was off Old Peterborough Road, and now they switched it to Old Range. Okay. Uh, but so Old Range is a class five road, right? Uh, class six. Or it's a, it, it was actually. I think it's, no, it's class six because it's owned by the town, but it's not. Oh, yeah, class, that's what, yeah. I don't know why I always like screw up the yeah. fives and the sixes. To me, yeah. the lower numbers would be the better ones. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, whatever. class one would be super high wish. Yeah. 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 Um, so. There are some questions as to like what aspect the select board needs to approve that project going in. So now that it's been conditionally approved, one of the conditions was the select board uh, approval or like an agreement between them as a part of the whole thing. Because in order to build off of a class six road, you do need select board approval. So that just needs to be a part of the vertex agreement. Even though it's not a residence, it's just a tower. Yeah, but they're cutting a road in. Yeah. Well, so there, there is a road there. No, they're cutting a road in now. Like Technically off of a driveway. Old range. Yeah, a driveway. That's um, cutting a driveway, okay. But yeah. the thing there is that um, Old Range is actually owned by two people because um, Gravy owns halfway across the road, and then the people who have the other yard on the other side. Old Ridge is a town road. Not discontinued, of course. Yeah, Peterborough it's, was it's discontinued. Old Peterborough was discontinued. Which is the one that goes up and then turns left? Is that Peterborough or Ridge? Old Peterborough is the one that goes. Like you have to go, you can go to Chapman and go down it, or you can go Old Ridge to Old Peterborough. They right. wanted to originally build okay, so Old, Old Peterborough. Peterborough. That was discontinued. So, so okay. forget about that. Old Peterborough then was why forget about it? Because, because that not has nothing anything. to do with anything. Like we're going, they're coming in off of Old Ridge. Road. They're coming in off of the Old Ridge. Yeah, just but the reason that they're doing that was because. Um, Old Peterborough was discontinued. They, they had to. So I'll it. tell you why, because he spoke to that last week. They're having trouble getting the agreements from the abutters, like getting approvals, like from those people that own to the midway point. This is what Fran said. So I don't know. That's if anybody's watching. That's out there. It says that they are never approached. Not me. It's what um, Fran Parisi had said um, from Vertex, or not Vertex, but whatever. Yeah. Fran. Um, yeah. He's Vertex. So. The, but that's why it's a non-issue because they were approved to come in off of Old Ridge Road. So there's nothing to consider about Old Peterborough anymore. Like it's coming out okay. and off of Ridge. Now Old Peterborough is going to need a whole lot of, of um, cause that's where a lot of water comes down the hill. And it's going to need quite a bit of work because it's got, the water's got to go through a culvert going under that and then it goes into somebody else's lot. On Old Peterborough Road, right? Yes. Where they're coming in off of Old Ridge Road, the, the driveway. I'm sorry, oh, this is Old Ridge Road. Okay, and there, like something was brought up about culverts and they worked through that during the planning board meeting. Did they? Yep. Okay. And approved that, um, basically the drainage plan that um, Bert had worked with them on, or the Bert was a primary pusher <laughs> of the water flow, right? And they adhered to all of those standards because they liked what he came up with. So they have the same basic design, okay, for this other side, okay, and took all that into consideration, okay. Um, so it's it's roughly the same, um, and Bert weighed in as such. Yeah, because I was because working on that old vertex when I was on the planning board. Yep. Yeah, so it went before um, Bert because he's the, um, yeah, you know, the engineer, the engineer for the planning board, right. um, and he recommended their approval. So, okay. Okay. 
So all like all those considerations were taken. So I'm not sure what aspect, you know, like I don't know if it's just because of the road cut, but maybe make that a part of the agreement that comes through. Okay. Um, so um, just don't. I'll put it on unilaterally the go list. through. Yeah, like anything that comes from them guys needs to come to this board. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the only point I wanted to make. Yep. And I don't know um, what authority was granted in the past, but I, like with this one, I want to make sure. Yeah. Because there were some questions that I had seen historically like, from years past, like right. correspondence between our legal, like back and forth to them. Yep. And I don't want that to be lost in translation now, just like so many other things have been kind of yep. lost. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just going to pick right back up and yep. put it right back before. Uh, Courtney and all them guys. Yep. All right. That's all I had for this evening. Uh, so with that, I'll make a motion to go into non-public session under 92A3. 91A. 90